So this last Sunday, uh, usually I can go to the uh, uh, to, to 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 summer dinner. And so we don't even know. She was going to get involved in the and stuff like that. She came up here and I said, well, I'll come up there. And I said, you know. I said, I'll even, <laughs> even do a little sponsorship <laughs> for, for, for whatever. <laughs> so anyway, we, we went to that one. It's great. And uh, we said, it's going to be straight in today. Yeah. We started down in Bryant and everything, you know, $3,000, So I wanted to, uh, she's one of the boss of the So I was going to say, I that ugly. No, I got it. 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 Don't worry. Well, as long as you do it for the dog. Yeah, I guess. She's experimenting with the live. Little boy. We have a lot of loans and a few extras. Yeah. Yeah. My wife comes in, she'll drive. Four by hours. Yeah, I'll take your gas. Yes, the letters go out this Friday. The deadline will be March the 13th, and then we have to wait 30 days for the committee to meet after that date, so it'll be sometime late April, early May. That's what I was going to do. Because this Sunday was the first time that we've been here. Yeah, he didn't like anything. Yeah, he didn't like anything. Well, Ross did something. Yeah. Yeah, that's Ross. Ross did something. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
No, I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to say anything. Oh, I might say anything. Let you know what we're going to be doing. I'm going to try to make good for it. I'm going to try to make good for it. It happens, especially with little cats. They get to ride the cow, and the cow get to ride them. All the way to the cow, they get to the cow. He loves $1,200 calf until I come to the cow. I'd say that. You want to be some hamburgers? You want to be some hamburgers, man. I told you to be careful about who you fuck around with. You got to get here early to get a real chair. <laughs> What do you say? I don't know. Yeah, I think he say, I don't think I've ever done that. I've been too tired of school. I don't think I've ever done that. That you know of. That I know of, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, it's been close a couple times where we just kind of zone out, you know, because I keep talking about the same stuff. Well, I'll never get a chance to Thinking about, okay, I gotta do this when I get out of here. Right? Yes, really and I hope, like, I hope, is that correct? <laughs> yes. 
We'll see. What did he say? Yeah, it's already been distributed. Quiet, y'all must be ready to start. <laughs> I was trying to wait on that clock, but I think it's a little slow. <laughs> we'll go ahead and start. I'm sure y'all are ready, so I want to call the uh, meeting of Region G Water Planning Group to order. And according to the clock on the wall, it's uh, 129. It's five minutes slow. Yeah, that's what I thought. I would like to make note for uh, each person to turn off your cell phones and pagers while the meeting is in progress. And please do not, for board members, please do not place your cell phones near their microphones. They will bleed through. And anybody that has, from the public, that has anything to, to say, please come up to the podium to speak. Uh, agenda item number two is the invocation. I've asked Dale Spurgeon if he would give that for us. Uh, if you'll join me in prayer. Father, we come before you today, and again, we just are grateful for this day that you've created for us, and Father, for the, the beauty of your creation that uh, displays who you are. Father, we just pray for your guidance and wisdom as uh, we uh, take a look at these issues of water, and Father, our, our desperate need for it. Father, we just continue to come before you and just pray for uh, continued moisture in our state and Father we are grateful for what you have provided and Father we place our trust in you. Father we are grateful for the safety that we've had coming. Father we pray for the same as we return to our homes. Father we pray your blessings upon this uh, group and Father for this organization of the Brazos River Authority and their staff as they work to serve uh, this great state of Texas and Father again we just thank you for the blessings of life. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you Dale. 
public meeting notice is properly posted as required by law. Agenda item number four is uh, attendance and announcements. I have one announcement. Uh, take attendance. There's an email address to me from Brian Patrick. It's uh, He uh, says, it's regret that I don't notify you of my resignation from the Bradley Street Water Planning Group. I am moving out of state and will not be able to fulfill this role. I truly uh, appreciate your leadership and highly value the opportunity. I, and uh, so Brian is moving out of state. He will be missed. So that is another position that uh, we will be trying to fill, and we will talk about that a little later in the agenda. Okay, roll call. Uh, Dale Adams. Here. Charles Beseda. Tim Brown. Here. Joe Cooper. Here. Alva Cox. I thought he was here somewhere. He was here. Okay. Uh, Travis Floyd. Here. Phil Ford. Here. Zach Holland. Here. Kelly Conner. Here. Mike McGuire. Here. Gary Newman. Here. Tommy O'Brien. Here. Judy Parker. Here. Gail Peak. Here. Dale Spurgeon. Here. Mike Sutherland. Here. Kevin Wagner. Here. Gary Westbrook. Here. Wayne Wilson. I am here. And Alva Cox. Here. All right. I declare that we do have a quorum to conduct business, so we will go to agenda item five. Well, I skipped a little bit. Let me let me give this to the public. A hard copy of the meeting packet is available for public viewing. The public can also view and download the meeting materials as well as listen to the audio of the meetings from the Brazos G website at www.brazosgwater.org. Now we'll go to agenda item five, public input. The Regional Water Planning Group is limited in its ability to participate in discussions or deliberations by the provisions of the Open Meeting Act. The group cannot deliberate or discuss issues that are not posted on the meeting notice. The public will have an opportunity to speak on water planning issues at this time or when a specific <coughs> agenda item comes up for discussion. Anyone wanting to speak today must fill out a request to speak form prior to the discussion of the agenda item. And when your name is called, we'd please ask you to come to the podium. I do not have <coughs> any, so I'm assuming at this time there are nobody from the public has any comments. Okay. Before we get into the program, I would like to make one other announcement. We do have a special guest with us today. She is on the agenda a little later, but we have a Texas Water Development Board member Kathleen Jackson uh, sitting in with us today. We are very pleased to have her. Agenda item six, program, report from Texas Parks and Wildlife Department staff and possible discussion regarding department activities. Jennifer, you have anything? Huh? Okay. Agenda item 6.2, report and possible discussion on updates from other regional water planning groups. Is there any representative from the any of the other regional water planning groups that won't, has any updates or anything they'd like to tell us? They met this morning. I wasn't there. No, you weren't. <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Agenda item 6.3, report and possible discussion on Brazos River Basin and Base Stakeholder Committee activities. Uh, Dale, do y'all have any updates? Yeah, I'll give you an update. We had anticipated we might have a meeting here today, but we couldn't get uh, representatives of the team that's doing our environmental study uh, for today. So they have scheduled a meeting for January the 29th at 1 p.m. here in this room and uh, one of the items will be an environmental flow validation uh, project update that's ongoing that's an interim report and also we'll be discussing uh, we've got some vacancies on the stakeholders group and we'll be discussing those and, and going through a process of soliciting uh, persons of interest to cover those categories that have a vacancy so uh, if you have any questions I'll be glad to answer them. Any other members have a question for Dale? All right, thank you, Dale. Agenda item 6.4, report and possible discussion on groundwater management area activities. 
Uh, let me see if I can get them in order. Jim May 6, Mike McGuire. Yeah. Nothing. Jim May 7, Dale Adams. Uh, we just had our meeting back in uh, December, and uh, we uh, discussed uh, new legislative bills and DFCs. And that's what we're working on. Okay. Uh, GMA 8, Judy Parker. Uh, nothing. We had a meeting scheduled for yesterday that was uh, canceled, so we have not met. Okay. GMA 12, Gary Westbrook. Uh, really nothing new. Uh, just just continuing on the process or continuing on the path. Uh, we'll have another meeting scheduled, I believe, later this month. Okay. 27th, I believe. GMA 14, Zach Holland. Our next meeting is scheduled for, I believe, the third Thursday <coughs> in February, and we're again continuing our work to get the next round of the DFCs considered running through the cafeteria. Okay. Anybody have any questions for any of those representatives? All right. Move to agenda item 6.5. A discussion of possible action on report from Texas Water Development Board staff and land. You don't, do you have anything? I don't. Uh, I, uh, just a little bit of information about the stakeholder meetings that are commencing next week for the chairs. This is the group that got together to develop the prioritization standards that were used, and uh, that process uh, that process is reopening to see if they want to make any adjustments to the. Uh, to the standard. And that's all I have. Okay. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, 6.5.1. Report from Mrs. Kathleen Jackson, Texas Water Development Board member. Glad to have you. Thank you. Forward thank to you. listening to you, what you have to say. Okay, well, thank you, Chairman Wilson. Um, really appreciate being here. And first off, just thank you, thank you, thank you for everything you do. As you know, you serve as the backbone of what we at the Water Development Board are able to accomplish. Um, just a, a little bit about me. Um, I'm from Beaumont, Texas. Um, my husband was a rice farmer. Um, spent a lot of time up here in Waco because he had two children that went to, uh, to Baylor. Um, I worked in industry for 37 years, so I'm a little bit of an anomaly. Usually you start out in the public sector and then you move into the private sector, so I'm coming you know, from, uh, I guess, a long career working for in the oil and gas, I worked for ExxonMobil. And uh, really, you know, took this position. I'd served on the Environmental Flows Committee uh, with the Lower Natchez Valley Authority. Worked uh, with TWCA for a number of years with Phil Ford and many of the other River Authority uh, general managers. Um, had served on the Environmental Flows Committee. Was an appointee to that. So had some background in water. Um, but when um, the opportunity came available, I felt like it was a way that I could use everything that I had learned and done throughout my career and the investment that others had made in me to, to help me make a difference in water policy you know for the next 50 years because I know that's important to my children to my children children and uh, so I'm, I'm really excited about this opportunity I'm taking it very seriously I serve in the engineering slot so as you know uh, one of the changes that that occurred with House Bill 4 is that you know they changed the um, the board leadership to full-time positions. So there is a position that's a financial slot that Carlos Rubenstein, our chairman, serves. Beck Brun sits in the uh, attorney for the legal slot. And then I'm a registered professional engineer, and so I serve in the engineering capacity. Um, just, just wanted to visit with you a little bit. Uh, Brenner's going to give you a kind of full, more detailed report on where we are with SWIFT and moving forward with funding. We're open for business and, and some of the changes that we've made internally within the agency. But just wanted to visit with you a little bit about kind of what my perception is and kind of what I see in terms of what the Water Development Board can do to kind of help us move forward and accomplish our goal, which, you know, I tell folks it's very simple. We could have a huge mission statement, but if you take, you know, Texas Water Development Board, which is a noun, and you turn it into a verb, it's developing water for Texas. And everything that we do ought to be targeted for that. And um, I personally believe that we need to, um, you know, internalize and know within our, our, our own internal teams, you know, what are their, those measures that we have for our success? I mean, how do we know internally that we're on track with doing what we need to do and really kind of supporting and implementing what the water planning groups have been doing, you know, for a number of years? Uh, we are totally unique within the country. We're well ahead, as you well know, of other parts 
uh, of the nation in that, you know, we do have a bottom-up planning process, and now we have, through the SWIFT funding, we have a bottom-up implementation process. So, you know, we can have the money, we can have the technology, but at the end of the day, it's going to be the local communities that have to step forward through their leadership and say, these, these projects are important and take a leadership role in making them happen. So a lot of what we've been doing as a board is traveling around Texas and just, just telling folks, you know, what, what the resources are that's available, uh, really kind of asking the question. I mean, as a, uh, as a county judge, as a member of the chamber, uh, reaching out to the Farm Bureau, Southwest Cattle Raisers Association, many of these groups that that have uh, a, an established organizational structure and I think more importantly is they have leadership that people within you know that particular contingent look towards so if we can get to that leadership and they can carry our message that's so much more powerful than somebody like me going before a group and saying I'm from Austin and I have this I have the solution I mean I don't have all the answers in fact I truly believe in my heart that the answers are not going to come out of Austin they're going to come out from you know communities and from folks that are out there, kind of boots on the ground. So a lot of what we're doing is not just going out and telling folks, you know, what we have and what we can do as a board, but also soliciting thoughts and ideas. Um, in, in terms of what's happening around Texas, I think it's very encouraging. Of course, I come from East Texas, where there's lots of water. And I think for a number of years, people really kind of thought, well, we got the water in East Texas. All we need to do is just kind of get it to the part of Texas where it's needed. And but I think when communities sat down and kind of started to looking at it, they said, well, first of all, you know, nobody's going to sell their water rights. They're going to want to enter into some sort of contract, and that starts from the day that you want to make the commitment. Secondly, you've got to get the right-of-ways. Pipelines are at least a million dollars a mile. And then you've got the operating costs associated with getting the water there. So I think it's really driven communities to look, you know, what can we do in our own backyard? And so as we as the state of Texas, I mean, can help communities kind of build their infrastructure and build their playground in their own backyards, I think that's going to be better overall for reliability and sustainability. I think the model that we have here, and uh, there is some talk, as you probably um, have been keeping up with, with the federal government, if they need to get more in the game and maybe do, do direct lending, I think we have the, um, the perfect model already in that we engage and we involve political subdivisions. So if you are a community uh, in this part of Texas, you know, and, and you work with the BRA or you work with one of the uh, groundwater districts, you know you have community leaders that are looking out for you. You can go in and uh, fund a public-private partnership. They can get the, the infrastructure up and running, but on down the road they may sell it and it, it may not have the oversight that business, I think, and communities need to make sure that it is sustainable. To me, that's the key. We've got to make sure that, you know, we not only have an abundant supply of water, but it's reliable and it's something that's going to be sustainable for years and years. Uh, if you look at economic development and talk to the economic de development gurus, they'll tell you that it's a whole new game. Used to be you come into a room like this and you'd have community leaders around and they go around the table and they talk about the schools and they talk about what their community had to offer. I mean, now with the internet, the people coming in that have a project, they probably know more than you do about your community. They only want to know three things. They want to know, first of all, you know, tell me about your transportation. I mean, how can I get my product to market? How much water do you have? And tell me about your skilled workforce. And, and I think the last thing, and then the last thing they want to know is that's all well and good, but how quickly can you get it? So I think a lot of what we need to focus on as the Water Development Board, we can't just be a bank, we can't just be what we've traditionally been in the past, is, is an, an agency that provides you know, low interest and affordable loan financing. That's important. But we've also got to you know, reach out to communities at the very early stages of their project where they're formulating and putting their, uh, their, their projects together because it's kind of like, it's, it's not so much anymore about how you slice up the pie, but how can you make the pie smaller? How can you put a project together that totally meets your needs so that you have something that's very tight and, and, and helps to reduce the cost? So low interest financing, the right kind of project, and then how can we get through uh, the permitting? How can we get through all of the hurdles that we need uh, with the Corps of Engineers and others in order to get that project up and going very quickly? So a lot of what we've been doing at the board has been targeted specifically towards those three things. Our big message and, you know, to the extent you can help us carry this is please, please come talk to us first. Um, oftentimes, 
you know, communities will get their projects together and they'll say, okay, how do we fund it? And they, and you know, then they come and talk to us. We think that, you know, we have, we are the data repository of Texas. We have all the, the water data that we can share with folks. Uh, we can uh, you know, sit down. We have, we have a team concept now. Brenner is here today and he's, of course, the team manager for the, for the Brazos team. Um, we have, and, and he has a whole group of people, each of the teams have their own planners, their financial people, their legal folks that can sit down and, and engineers and help you scope out the project and figure, figure out how to move forward and, um, and make it a reality. Not just at the beginning, but as you move forward to make sure that you're, uh, you're staying on top of it and as things come up, you make adjustments to make sure you meet your final end goal. Um, I think that there's great opportunity in Texas. Um, in terms of the role of the regional water planning groups, I think you're going to be asked um, to do more. Uh, you're very important from a leadership standpoint. Uh, one of the things I feel like that we're charged with is the, this whole process of continuous improvement. We need to ask ourselves in the water planning process, are there things that we can go in and maybe modify and do differently? Uh, we all are aware that in many areas of the state there are conflicts that have arisen through different regional water planning groups. Um, I would really like to see the chairs, our, our stakeholder committee, which is made up of all of the, the chairmen of the regional water planning groups, come together and uh, work with our executive administrator and our staff and see, you know, how can we look at the process, um, identify what those challenges or conflicts might potentially be, and then facilitate resolution early in the process. Again, the whole objective being, you know, we can't just have the great, we can't have the, fin we can't just have the financing, we can't just have the technology, we've got to be able to, you know, move that project quickly and get it on the ground as quickly as possible. So, uh, exciting times in Texas. Uh, we're, we're well ahead of the game because of the work that y'all have done and continue to do uh, with your regional water planning. Uh, we now have the funding through the SWIFT, so we've got the $2 billion for loans and we have many other uh, programs that we can utilize to build infrastructure around Texas. I think, you know, our challenge as a board is to make sure, and again, I think this is where the measures come back into, you know, how do we know that, you know, the kind of projects that are coming to us are, are those that are going to be impactful. And um, to that extent, I think the outreach that we're doing, the folks in this room who can go out to the individual communities and just, you know, have them ask themselves the question, you know, how do we know that we've got to have, we have the water and the infrastructure in place to meet the needs of the future? So um, that's just a little bit of, uh, of what I kind of feel like our role is. We are uh, totally a resource to the folks um, in Texas. Uh, I truly believe we need to be out doing, and um, so we're spending, I think, more time out than we are in the office uh, in Austin. Uh, I can't thank you enough for, I know this is a, a labor of love and it's appreciated. We would not be where we are today if it weren't for the efforts that you're doing. And, you know, it's kind of like when you do a good job, you're asked to do more. So I think we're going to be asking more of the regional water planning groups to kind of help us from a leadership standpoint and from a policy standpoint, uh, and help us to kind of set the kind of policy and the tone that we need to be able to move forward to be successful. So uh, there are a couple other folks. Uh, well, Jennifer White is here, and she's my chief of staff. Just wanted you to say hi to Jennifer. But if there's uh, anything in your, in your uh, community that uh, you have an opportunity where you'd like to have someone come in and talk to the chamber group or just, um, you know, have, have an opportunity to talk about what we're doing, the board, I, or one of the other board members, I think would be very happy to do that and would see that, you know, as a great opportunity and something we'd really like to do. So, you know, thank you for being our ambassadors and I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Take a few Oh, yes, yes. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. Jackson? I've already had an opportunity to ask her all mine, so here's your chance. If you'll give us your answers, we won't have to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you'd rather hear them from her. <laughs> None? Okay. Think of any later. All right, well, thank you. Thank you. I think she's going to be here a little while to sit in on our meeting for a little while, so you're welcome to stay as long as you want. Thank you. Agenda item 6.5.2, report on uh, SWIFT application process from Brenner Brown, the Texas Water Development Board, Brazos team leader. And here he comes. Thank you, Wayne. Good afternoon. Um, I guess before I get started with the uh, um, 
specifics of my, uh, my talk, I'd like to talk just a minute about how we got here uh, in 2011 during the uh, severe drought we had. I was the board's representative on the Emergency Drinking Water Task Force, and, and we were going around the state trying to work with folks to help uh, find solutions to, uh, to the drought that was causing so many problems. And, you know, us at the board, we were, we were working really hard trying to think, what can we do to respond to drought? And, and one day I was making a presentation and it hit me, everything the Texas Water Development Board does is a response to drought. As you know, or many of you know, we were created in 1950s after the drought of record. Um, we were created as a bank to fund water infrastructure projects around the state and also as an entity to, uh, to do state water planning. And, and since the 60s, we've, uh, we've developed and uh, produced a state water plan every five years. Uh, in the uh, 1990s, 1996, we had a very severe drought in the, in the state, and uh, the legislature responded with uh, um, the SB1, which created the bottom-up process for water planning in the state and the whole new planning process that we have now. And then after the drought of 2011, the legislature, res legislature responded once again by creating the SWIFT program. And the SWIFT program made significant changes to the Water Development Board. We went from a, a six-member part-time board to a three-member full-time board, which creates a lot of work for staff. <laughs> but, uh, but it's been a great, uh, a great effort at the board. Another thing we've done, and I'll, I'll talk more about this at the end of the presentation, is we've created teams to manage the, uh, the regions around the state. We have six teams, and each of those teams has two or three regions that they manage. Uh, the Brazos region is made up of Region G and Region B. So any projects that are funded in the Brazos region will come through me and my team. Um, so the SWIFT, um, the SWIFT is we're open for business on SWIFT. Well, the, uh, and I'm probably speaking to the choir here, but what, what projects are eligible to be funded through the SWIFT program? And that's projects that are in the state water plan with the capital costs. Um, we have funds available for planning, acquisition, design, and construction for these projects. Now the two uh, very important legislative uh, um, set-asides, I'll call them, for the, uh, for the SWIFT are we're required to use at least 20% of the funding for conservation efforts and then at least 10% of the funding for rural projects. Now this won't necessarily be 10% and 20% each year. Our goal is over the life of the program to allocate at least, and we do consider these a ceiling I mean a floor, not a ceiling, I'm sorry. So we want to allocate at least 10% of our funding over the life of the program to rural projects and at least 20% to conservation and reuse projects. So what kind of funding do we have? Well, you know, what we've done is we've taken our traditional state funding programs and we've just uh, modified those a little bit to, for the SWIFT program. The, uh, the, we have low interest loans. And these low interest loans receive a subsidy, um, a 20 year loan can receive the subsidy of 35.5% below the Texas Water Devo Development Board cost of funds. I just, just say we're, our cost of funds are about 3.35% right now, 35% of that is 1.17, give or take. So a loan through the SWIFT program right now at that interest rate, and as you know, interest rates vary, would be uh, about 2.15%. So that's an exceptional interest rate, and uh, uh, we're very proud to offer it. Now, as you go over, that's with a 20-year maturity. If you go 21 to 30-year maturities, the subsidy will be reduced proportionally as you extend the life of the loan. We also have deferred loans, and our deferred loans are uh, if you have a, a project with a long lead time, say you have some, some extensive permitting issues or uh, extensive planning design and acquisition that might take uh, um, six, seven, eight years, the deferred loan would be a great option to go to, um, and you get a subsidy of 15% below the TWDB cost of funds for a 20-year deferred loan. It's a very good deal if, if you're maybe for a, a reservoir that has a long lead time for permitting and planning. 
would, the deferred would be a good rate, uh, way to go. Also, uh, once the uh, deferred loans, are, once construction ends, that's when you start paying uh, your principal and interest. Also, board participation. Those are those of you that are familiar with the uh, with the Water Development Board funding. This has been called state participation in the past, and so board participation is for uh, long-term financing um, in a in, with interest in a regional facility. So the board will take a partial ownership of a project um, that uh, has excess capacity. Uh, an example I have, we met with a group on a, uh, a pre-application meeting for a SWIFT project and, and they want to they wanna build a pipeline. So they have some, uh, some entities that are, that are some subdivisions that are going to be built out in the future. So they want to build a, an oversized pipeline that, that um, can, can meet that need in the future. So what we would look at is, is any need that you're going to meet 10 years or more out in the future, the board can take partial ownership of that portion of the project. Now, the way this would work is we would fund, we'd have two different funds. You could do the low interest loan for the part of the project that's going to meet the current need, and then you do the board participation for the part of the project that's going to meet the future need. So this is a good way. Uh, I've heard it described as you. What it does is it it does not require the folks that are living in your area now to pay for the water infrastructure for the folks that are going to move into your area in the future. So it'll it'll extend the life of that loan and it, and then it'll uh, it'll make it more affordable for everybody throughout the process. And that the subsidy is the deferred. Um, the, the board participation. So you would get the uh, low cost, the, uh, the Texas Water Devo Development Board interest rates. What's the timeline for the SWIFT application? Right now we are accepting abridged applications. It's a pretty simple process. What we're looking for, we have an abridged application online. It's a two-page abridged application and we're going to take those abridged applications. We're accepting those um, starting January 1 through February 3rd. So there, we're, uh, we're accepting them right now. We're going to take all those applications in and then we're going to rank those applications. We will use the, uh, the rankings that are provided by the, uh, um, by the planning regions as part of that ranking process. And you'll notice we don't have hard and fast dates here, spring, summer, fall. It's the first time we've done this, so so we're, uh, we're we're not exactly sure exactly how many days each each uh, each part of the process is going to take. So in the spring, we will have those projects ranked, and then we will invite people in to submit an application. You'll have 30 days to submit a an administratively complete application, and then we'll uh, consider and approve the applications in the summer. Authorize our bond sale in the summer. And then we'll have our bond selling closing, and then the borrowers will close their loan in the fall. Our goal this year is to fund $800 million in projects, and we really don't know what it's going to look like. We, um, you know, obviously we want to get in as many applications as we can, but uh, we, you know, we don't we don't know how many applications we're going to get. So this is this will be a good starting point for us. We've got a lot of interest from a variety of uh, of sizes of cities and, and rural areas. So, and this is, uh, this is a, a big question, how will the projects be prioritized? I was in Stephenville uh, a couple months ago, and, and Stephenville is a, a town of about 16,000, and they were a little concerned that not being rural, rural definition is 10,000 and under, but not being a big city, they were concerned that they might fall through the cracks. And I think one of the best things our board has done is they've created a, a prioritization system that that allows each entity to receive the same amount of points regardless of the size of the entity. So you could serve a large population or you could assist a diverse urban and rural pop population, provide regionalization, or meet a high percentage of water user needs. You can max out the score in this area with 25 points. So you don't have to be a, a big city. Houston could receive 25 points. Marked a small town could receive 25 points based on the way we've developed this prioritization. And then also in this next one, you can see that, that any of these, uh, you know, readiness to proceed with a project has no, 
um, is not determined by the size of your population. Uh, emergency need for a project is not determined by the size of the population. So what we've done is we've created a system that really levels the playing field between rural entities and then your larger cities. I will add that emergency need for the project. We're doing a lot of emergency stuff, emergency need stuff at the board right now, which is meeting a very important need. So this is the abridged application. You'll see it's a very simple two-page application. We have a team that will help you fill this out if you, need any, if you need any help with it. And then you'll submit that application. And then, as I said, we'll take those applications in. Um, this is just uh, contact information for me and uh, Doug Shaw, our ombudsman. On my team, I have uh, um, Land Bookouts, my planner. We have two engineers. Uh, Joanne Duncan and Jesse Milanovic. My financial analyst is Dane Larson. Our legal analyst is Joe Reynolds. And we're all supported by Brenda O'Neill. And we, we kind of share our environmental reviewers uh, amongst the teams. A couple other things I want to mention. Some of the, the charge that the legislature gave us when they, when they reorganized our agency is they, they said, be more customer service oriented. In order, um, so what we've done to do that is, is we've created an online application. At the end of this month, we're going to go live with our online application. So anytime an entity fills out an application, we will store all of that data. So as you come back year after year for your next project, it's going to make the process that much easier. It's kind of like the, uh, the TurboTax form where it prompts you to the next question, and it'll make sure that you don't submit the application before it's complete. So that's going to help. Another thing that we've done, I think, that's, that's really been received very positively is we've streamlined our environmental review process. And, and many people um, over the, the, the years, that's one of the reasons people that did not want to come to the Water Development Board is because of our envir environmental review process. So we've really streamlined that, streamlined that. Some of the environmental reviews were textbook size, you know, three, four, five binders. And, and we've done, we've moved away from some of the text and, and went to checking, you know, check boxes for answers. And then if we need more information, we'll go out and get that information from you. So it, it takes a lot, a lot of the uh, time and effort. Some, many of the consultants have said this will reduce their costs 30 to 50 percent for their environmental review. Um, and then also we've created the teams. And, and I, for me, I think the biggest advantage of the team is, is, is we get within, you know, within my team, any project in that region, we're gonna, if we're funding it, we're going to know about it. So it gives us a chance to, to maybe work with several entities that are nearby each other that are working on similar projects but might not necessarily have communicated with each other. We can maybe uh, get you folks to meet up and, and, and um, enjoy an economy of scale and, and do a, a project that will serve several entities and maybe regional in nature. So I'll be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any questions over the SWIFT or uh, any of our funding. Okay, I see a question. Judy Parker? I have a question on uh, your second slide. You have that it's planning, acquisition, design, and construction. Yes, ma'am. Or your, your, what you look at. Uh, in our district, as well as many groundwater districts, if a water supply comes to us to drill a water supply well, we require them to, to drill a test well to see if the supply is there, the impact on local areas, and that is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And for small entities, this is where they're going to need the funds. I don't see where that fits into any of, of those particular categories. Is that going to hurt them on their point systems? No, plan. I mean, that the uh, the test well could be considered planning, part planning? of the planning, okay. planning and design, because you, you, you got to have the test well to do the design. So the, the test wells are funded through these programs. Any other questions? <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. If, if any of y'all have, have you know, any folks that you know that are thinking about doing a project, um, jot down my, uh, my contact information and have them call me or have me call them.
and uh, and we can answer their questions. We, you know, as I said, I have engineers, financial analysts. One of the things we ask is, let's just sit down and, and compare the numbers. Compare the numbers that you might get in the uh, private market versus the numbers you might get from the Water Development Board. We have several different programs, funding programs, the clean water, drinking water, SRF programs, the state programs, and then SWIFT. So there's a lot of options uh, that, that can meet the needs of folks out there. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Renner. Next, we'll go to agenda item 6.6. Discussion and possible action on request for consistency waiver, substitution, and or amendment to the Brazos G Regional Water Plan. 6.6.1, discussion and possible action on City of Troy consistency waiver request. Is there anybody here representing the City of Troy? Yes. Do you have anything to present? Uh, sure, I can talk to it. I can talk to it. Okay, please come up to the podium. Thank you. And um, my name's Anthony Beach with BSP Engineers, and I have with me today my colleague, Janet Shigit. Janet? And also uh, representing the uh, city manager for the city of Morgan's Point, we have David Huseman. Hey, David. Um, yeah, it, uh, we're asking for the consistency waivers for these two different communities. Um, uh, basically, I've been informed since our last meeting last month that maybe the city of Troy doesn't need one because they already have a well system and reserved water in place. So we may not need that for the city of Troy. So my uh, discussion uh, for for this agenda item, we'll focus on the city of uh, Morgan's Point for now. Um, right now, the city of Morgan's Point is totally dependent on wholesale surface water from an uh, from the adjacent system. Um, the city of Morgan's Point would like the flexibility of having a redundant backup supply. Uh, they feel like this uh, project could be a payback within an eight to ten year time period, uh, obviously with a significant savings of uh, water cost after uh, year eight. Currently, uh, the city of Margaret's Point uh, yearly consumption is about 450 acre feet. Uh, our 30-year demand projection is about 1,200. So our, su our groundwater supplemental request is about 775 acre feet. And if the board would consider that amendment, that gives Margaret's Point the flexibility to uh, initiate that project at some point in the near future. Would you like to add anything to that, David? <coughs> um, just we would appreciate your favorable consideration of this, this agenda. Okay. All right. Uh, stay there, Mr. Beach. I'm here. David, can you get up there and give us a little clarification and technicalities on, on, uh, okay. um, on what we need to do? <coughs> what we need to do? For uh, Morgan's Point. Currently, Morgan's Point in the plan. As far as its current supplies, uh, only has surface water, so hence the need for a consistency waiver if they are going to utilize groundwater and utilize water 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 development board funding for the construction of the wells. Uh, right now, we don't know exactly where the wells are going to be. I think they're in the, the the Trinity Aquifer. That's correct. Okay, they'll be in the Trinity Aquifer. We don't know exactly where they'll be. We know roughly the volume of water mm -hmm. that the wells would be designed to supply. And that, that's really all we have right now in terms of, of that. From my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, the city council has not yet decided to move forward with the project, but they're anticipated to make that decision within a couple of months. And you're requesting the consistency waiver to have that in hand should you decide to move forward so that you can expedite that process. Yes. That's correct. Is that laid out? Mm -hmm. that's, that's all I know, Mr. Chairman. Sir? That's all I know. Okay. 
Uh, uh, we have a question from uh, Judy Parker. So am I understanding that, that Troy is now not needing the consistency waiver? That's that's my understanding. They have groundwater as a current source of supply in the plan. And so when the water development board looks at their funding application, which I think it's, uh, it's in it's in progress now. It's already in progress right now. They'll see that that project is consistent with the plan, and so there won't be a need for a waiver of consistency of the board. Gary Westbrook. Is this any different than what we did for Cameron? Cameron had a uh, somewhat more specific to the project at the point that we uh, wrote a letter of support for the waiver of, waiver of consistency. Um, right now we know the volume of groundwater, we know the aquifer system in the county that it will come from. Uh, I don't know if we need to know more than that in order to be, be consistent. Well, that would be my next question. Do you need anything other than, I mean, can we go ahead and take action? That's what I was going to ask. I was just trying to figure out how to say it, Gary. Oh. <laughs> Do you need any more information before we take action? Is that I really don't need any more information. This is typically less information than, than we have when folks come forward. They've usually already applied or have a funding application in process with the board, and they've decided to move forward already. Uh, but I don't think it would be wrong for the, the planning group to support a waiver of consistency just to expedite the process should they move forward. It doesn't. It's no skin off anybody's back to do that at so, this point. Um, so the request mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, Region G uh, write a uh, letter of a agreement supporting the consistency waiver to the Water Development Board. Right. Trey would draft a, a letter of support for Wayne's signature uh, supporting the waiver of consistency. All right. We have another question from yeah. Gail Peak. Typically, do we have the City Council request? I mean, it sounds like we're kind of ahead of the community. Usually, well, um, I've never seen us have a copy of an action by a City Council, but we'll, we, you know, we've been told that the city or utility system has decided to move forward with the project. Typically, they've already submitted application for funding to the board. The board has told them, you need a waiver of consistency. So they're, they're a little bit ahead of that curve. Is it, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing it now. It saves them from having to come back to the planning group in two months or three months or a month when and if their, their city council does decide to move forward with the project. Okay. Well, we have another question from Tim Brown. Yeah, and, and I, I was having difficulty hearing either one of you, but I understood you to say that you're, you're thinking that you'll be looking at a Trinity well but you really don't have any specific proposal about where it might be or in, in, in what part of the Trinity or? Yeah, yeah. Um, in, in, in regards to the Trinity, yeah, we know it's going to be in the lower, the lower Trinity. So we, we have established that. In, in, in regards to its location, that, that was more geographical. We actually have two tracks that we are, were under consideration, but we haven't refined down to those two, which one of those two specific tracks. So and, yes, have but you've been in a discussion with Clearwater on, on your uh, proposal. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Second. <laughs> Who made the first one? I was trying to. Gary Westbrook. <laughs> All right. So Gary makes a motion to grant the request and uh, write a letter of support for the consistency waiver and a second from Mike Sutherland. Okay. Is there any other discussion on that motion? All right, I think everybody is here, so we're going to Thank you, Mr. Yes. vote. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, no. Okay, it passes. So that takes care of 6.61 and 6.62. Uh, 6.63 is discussion of possible action on Strong Water Supply Corporation Consistency Waiver Request. Do we have anybody from there that... No? Okay. Then we will go to 6.4, 6 uh, discussion of possible action on Mingus Water Supply Corporation Consistency Waiver. Do we have anybody from that water supply? All right. Do, do we have any requests in writing from these folks who are not present? 
Uh, Trey, you want to address that? I just thought Trey made these up and put them on. <laughs> Make sure our agenda looks yeah, good, right? Yeah, it looks like we're doing something. Yeah. We, did, we did receive an official request letter from a gentleman named Derek Turner with Jacobs and Martin Engineering. For, uh, actually, the, the last four were more of a regional type uh, request. Uh, he had indicated that he would be here today, but I haven't seen any uh, more uh, information from him to date, and I don't think he's. I don't. I don't think he is here. So, to my knowledge, there's been no feedback at this point. Mm -hmm. that what so you there, there was nothing specific. In so the there, request? We, yeah, we have a specific letter. Jennifer, she can pull it up real quick. I mean, it, my question is: Is there enough information in the letter to to have the background to take action? If not, we wait. If there is. It's a development of uh, groundwater in uh, the ERAF County area. But beyond that, I certainly don't want to speak for them. Well, when somebody wants an amendment of consistency waiver tray, we usually ask them to come make a presentation so they'll have a lot, so we will have the opportunity to that's correct to to vet out any questions or anything that we might have. So uh Judy Parker has a question. Uh, yeah, just uh, have have they contacted Central Texas? Nope. I mean, uh, Middle Trinity. No, nope. they have not. There's contacted. not much water in Northwest Erath County. Right. That that's what I was concerned about. <clears throat> if they're looking for groundwater, you're talking an area that is pretty it's just minus area. any groundwater anywhere in in the Eastland County, you know, Northern Erath County. It, it, there's not much groundwater there, so I'm curious as to. Well, that's one of the reasons we asked them to come and present, so we can we can vet out these type of questions that we have. So do you need a motion to postpone or table? Uh, or no, just no if they're not here, there's just there you go. won't take any action. All right, thank you, Trey. Thank you, Chair. So that takes care of 6.65 and 6.66. Continuing agenda item 6.7, discussion of possible action on HDR planning tasks. First one is 6.7.1, presentation of water management strategy evaluation. David, are you going to do those? I sure will. All right. That's my favorite one. What well, I understood. <laughs> Joe Spurgeon, were you, did you have a question? I'm sorry to disturb the no. presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Please proceed. Okay. Gary's fault. We have been uh, moving forward with the water management strategy evaluations for the last six months. We've been presenting the results of those evaluations. All those uh, water management strategies are identified in our scope of work that the Water Development Board approved for us to work on. Uh, where we identified those strategies were from previous water plans, projects that were either recommended or at least evaluated or considered in 2001, 2006, and 2011. There have been a few strategies that have been specifically requested for us to look at by either water user groups or wholesale water providers. There were a few strategies that were identified, I think, by members of the planning group, and then there was a few strategies that HDR identified. We went through a scope of work process to, to narrow down the list to what strategies we would actually look at, look, look at for this round of regional planning, and we're in the process of going through that right now. We're almost complete. There's about 12 strategies that still need to be finalized and presented to you. We've got several of them are essentially done, but we haven't had them QC'd on the HDR side yet. So we won't be presenting any today. Uh, wanted to give you a list and just so you get an idea, thinking back of uh, the number of strategies we're talking about. First is water conservation. That's something that has to be looked at for every water user group that has a need. We've already gone through that. We've, we've identified how we want to look at advanced conservation and apply it to municipal irrigation, mining, those other uses. We looked at eight reuse projects, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to read the, the list to you, but the numbers in parentheses are the number of strategies within each category that we looked at, just so you get an idea of the number of strategies that we've looked at. 
Uh, when we get to the miscellaneous strategies, as we pull together the plans for the counties, we will often come up with, oh, we need a cost to get water from point A to point B so that we can implement this strategy. And it may not have been included when we looked at a larger strategy in the beginning. So that's, a, that's an area that will cost small treatment plants, small water lines, maybe, maybe additional groundwater wells. As we, as we develop the county plans, we identify a need. We'll cost out a water line, a pipeline transmission system, that sort of thing, and, and have those costs ready for the plan as well. So that's what that second to the last one is. And then the additional strategies, we knew there were going to be some that we hadn't identified yet that people may come to us during the planning process and ask us to look at. Uh, the uh, North Central Texas Municipal Water District asked us to look at an off-channel reservoir to supplement water supply from Miller's Creek. We've looked at that. Uh, last planning group meeting, we talked about some larger sort of out-of-the-box thinking regional projects to serve the needs in Williamson County. And uh, we're having a meeting, and we'll d discuss this on a subsequent agenda item with folks in Williamson County to see which of those strategies they're interested in us taking a look at and potentially including as recommended in the plan. So that's what those last, last two are there identified. The strategies that we still have to present are on this list here. Uh, Brush Creek Reservoir would be a project for the city of Marlin. We've looked at it in the past. All we're doing is updating the supply and updating the cost numbers. Meridian Off-Channel Reservoir is a project that was identified in the 2001 plan, was not in the 2006, was not in the 2011. Uh, it would provide roughly 600 acre feet per year of water in the Bosque County area. Uh, we're, we've, we've identified the project to take water from Possum Kingdom Reservoir to City of Abilene, and City of Abilene is reviewing that analysis right now to make certain it's consistent with what their plans are for that project. We're still working on analyzing the different uh, water supply or pieces available from the Brazos River Authority <coughs> System Operations Project. The uh, quarry control is that upper basin deal. It really doesn't create more water, but reduces the cost of treatment downstream, and we'll have numbers for you soon for that. Brazos River Authority has been looking at reallocating storage in several of the federal reservoirs that they have water rights in, and that's a list of the reservoirs there that were actually our sub-consultant, Frieza Nichols, is looking at for us right now. The same with the Lake Ranger conjunctive use. We've looked at that project for the last two plans. We're just updating the supply and the cost for that. And the rest of the projects that we're looking at, we've thrown in the whatever Williamson County regional project that the good folks in Williamson County ask us to look at following this meeting later this month, we'll add that to the list as well. Just wanted to give you an update as to where we are. Over the next two planning group meetings, you'll see these last 12 projects. Uh, it, it, evaluated and explained to you so you understand what we're talking about as we bring these projects forward. Are there any questions or Anybody discussion? have any questions for David? All right, well, let's go to the next one. Uh, 6.7.2, presentation of draft plans for some counties as available. Okay, you all had your coffee? Yeah. <laughs> We've we developed draft plans for four of what I would call the simpler counties, but they will generally show the concept for how we can present the county by county plans for the water user groups who actually have plans within a county. ERAF, Callahan Falls, and Hill counties are relatively small counties have relatively modest needs because they have relatively modest water demands, and so they were kind of low-hanging fruit that we can show you right now. Um, we're working on developing the WUG plans. We'll, we'll follow those up with wholesale water provider plans. We kind of do those in really in conjunction with each other in parallel. Uh, it's, it's really a matching game. We look at who has needs. We look at what recommended or what strategies we've evaluated would be realistic for them to uh, meet their needs with, and we sort of play that matching game to get those up. Um, quite often there are specific strategies that are requested by a water user group or wholesale water provider, and that becomes part of that entity's plan. Uh, as I said, the ones we presented today are relatively simple. What I'd like to get is from a 
not necessarily a definite motion, but a consensus from you as to how you would like us to present the other 33 counties. Recognizing that these are simple counties, go through pretty quickly. Um, Land, Land said I was trying to scare you into some kind of action, so we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what you say. There's really three options. We can present them as we're going to present these four counties today, recognizing that that could be as many as 16 counties in February and 16 in March for you to take a look at those plans. That's option one. Option two is as we complete a text section for a county, send that out to you for your review and comment. And then when we come back in February, we come back in March, and we come back in April, address your questions and comments at that time. So if you don't have any questions or comments on a particular county, or maybe only one or two water user groups within a county, then that'll really expedite that process. Uh, option three is to wait until we've got all 37 counties done, give it to you as one, one stack of county plans. And remember, this is the thickest, thickest section in our, in our regional water plan. And then have you react and provide review comments and ask questions on that. My recommendation is to go with the second option. We have done the first option in the past where we've sat through two and three hour presentations where we work through each county. As we go through um, the county plans for the sub-regional meetings, it'll follow pretty much this format, but it'll be for basically a third of the region at a time. It'll be a, be a little bit more, more uh, more expeditious and it'll be for folks that are directly in that area so they'll have more of an interest in the specific counties that we're talking about. So what we're going to look at today are the counties of Callahan in the upper left, or, or circled in the upper left, Erath, Falls, and Hill County. And we'll go through them pretty quickly. Yes, sir. David, if we were to go with option number two, mm -hmm. um, could we get that uh, um, those of us that want it, can we get it electronically? That, that's how we would do it. Okay. We would prepare a portable document file or PDF file, and as we got it to a point where we think this is at least 90% complete, there may be a few, a few WUGs that we're still working on strategies for, or maybe there's a few places where we think y'all ought to make the decision for us as to which strategy to recommend we would PDF that and email it out to the group. So it'd be kind of come piecemeal, somewhat haphazard. So you'd be ch checking your email box and see there's an email from HDR and it's got one to five PDF files attached to it for you to take a look at prior to the next planning group meeting. So that, that's how I anticipate that looking. We follow for two, uh, four people ask questions about one particular one, then when we meet together, we would go over those four? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So then when we get together, somebody has questions about a particular strategy for a water user group or questions about maybe an entire county, then we can address those questions then. Thank you. I think we ought to do two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I agree, Gary. I'll make that a motion if you need I'll it. I'll second. We just need consensus. We don't have to have... I mean, unless anybody here objects. <laughs> yes, Tommy. Time frame on when we get that information. That, that's a good question, Tommy. Did, I don't make sure David heard you. Okay. Ta what what Tommy asked was, is there a time frame on when we would get that information? We would get it out to you as our staff complete county plans. As they become available, we'd send them out immediately. So, it, as I said, it'd be kind of piecemeal somewhat sporadic in how you would get them, but we would keep track of which ones we've sent out to the group. I would keep track of if you call or email me with questions, I'll keep track of those questions as well. And then when we get to the meeting in February, the meeting in March, and meeting in April, then that'll be another opportunity to publicly ask, ask some questions as well. So it wouldn't be a set schedule like these five counties by this date. Sometimes putting together the plans and communicating with some of the water user groups that we need to have some more contact with doesn't follow a, a, a very definite schedule sometimes. Uh, but we would see all of them by the April meeting. You would see all of them by the April meeting. My preference is you'd see all of them by the March meeting, but I'm not, you may not have them all complete by the March meeting. David, is there a way that we could uh, 
uh, or you could uh, number these one through thirty-seven. That way, that way we know when, when we get them, and we know when we get them all. Sure, we could do that. I mean, I mean, I'm I'm pretty simple-minded. Yeah. If I just get a bunch of them, I'm not sure. I'll know if I'm missing any. Sure, I'll let you know that. Uh, we wouldn't necessarily give them to you in alphabetical order. We kind of take the low-hanging fruit and work the harder ones as we can get through them. And so as we get through some difficult situations, boom, we'll put a period on it, send it out, but we'll keep a running tally of what we've sent out to you. So you know which ones you have and which ones you don't. And we'll communicate that in each email. And these are the first four? These are the first four. And Amazing. what I will provide you is not necessarily what this PowerPoint presentation looks like. These are tables from the text that we would send you. So if you go back and look at the 2011 plan, if you look at the individual county plans, that's what we'll send you is the text with these tables. Is that okay with everybody? If nobody, I mean, is there any objection? Though? I guess. Just All right. as long as we don't get four or five of them the day before the meeting. Say that, yeah. Now you that, may get four or five the day before the meeting, but I would anticipate that any questions or comments would be at the subsequent meeting, not the one the next day. Is that okay, Tommy? That, that, that would be okay. Right, I agree yeah. with you. Okay. We need yeah, time to be able to evaluate them before we formulate our questions. So, yeah. Pardon? I'd have no problem with them posting to the website either. That that provides that transparency and that openness of what we're looking at as well. It's all draft information. It will be posted as draft. Hopefully no one will get, will suffer any angst as they see something they don't agree with. They'll just contact us and say, why did you do this? And we can say, oh, we didn't realize that was not what you wanted, sort of thing. So okay. there is the, the opportunity Following this process, we will present the county plans at what we're calling the three sub-regional meetings. This is something we started in 2006. We're going to meet towards the end of March, and this is on a, another agenda topic as well, but we'll meet in Abilene, Bryan College Station area, and in Waco, sort of upper, middle, lower portions of the region, and really only discuss counties in the upper third, middle third, lower third at that time. And the purpose is to allow the water utility directors and water managers in those areas to come in and give us feedback on that section of the plan that pertains to them. So we'll have to give a fairly detailed presentation then. That's one opportunity for the public to comment even before the initially prepared plan is submitted. Then after the IPP is submitted in May, there's that whole public comment process as well before we finalize the plan later this year. So there's multiple opportunities for the public to comment. This is really the process by which you help us develop this initially prepared plan and put these different pieces together. It's a fairly large task, a lot of information, and uh, as we get it available, we want to get it out to you as soon as we can. What I'd like to do is go through these four plans just It'll give you an understanding of, of what the data and the tables mean and what, what to be expecting. And maybe there's, there's a different way you'd like to see us present this information as well. Okay. So going through, at the top of each county plan, we list the water user groups in the county. And then we list what their 20, 2040 and 2070 needs are. We could list all uh, seven decades or whatever the number is, six decades. That usually takes up a lot more space. The tables are pretty concise here, and it gives you a snapshot of what that 30-year number is and what that final end of planning cycle number is. That's the way we've done it for, I think, all four planning cycles. It seems to have worked pretty well. Um, occasionally, we'll have needs in an earlier decade that because of declining demands don't show up in 2040 or 2070, so sometimes it masks some needs you'll see an entity that uh, that may not show a need in 2040 or 2070 that may have one in 2020 or 2030. That's the only downfall to this type of table, but it does make it very concise, and those instances are pretty few and far between, and you can go into the plan and see where their actual needs are. And then it gives us, on, on this comment, 
would tell you whether you need to go to a different county for that particular water user group because it may be in multiple counties. For example, Potosi WSC, we present their plan in the Taylor County plan rather than in Callahan County. So it directs you to a different section. Uh, and then it tells us whether or not we've got a plan for them and whether there's a surplus or a deficit and where to look for other information often. And then we go through and there's text that precede these tables, explain somewhat who the water user group is, where the current supplies are, we'll identify what strategies we may have considered for them, and then we'll lay out here is the plan for this, for, for this entity, and then there will be a table that lists the cost and the supply in each of the planning decades. And so we're looking at uh, the city of Baird right now, and you'll see that their projected balance, that's the surplus or their shortage, are all positive, meaning we're showing them as not having any needs. But in 2020, their gallons per capita day usage is greater than a 140. So as we've implemented conservation for municipal WUGs, we assume a 1% per year reduction until they reach 140 gallons per capita a day. So they, had, they do have conservation identified to save them six acre feet in that first decade, but in every decade after that, they're either at 140 gallons per capita a day or they're below it. So that's why you only see conservation in that first, first decade of the plan. And then this bottom line is a new requirement that the board is asking us to show, and it's what they call the secondary need. How much of a need do they have after conservation and reuse supplies, or conservation and reuse strategies have been applied? So sort of the remaining need that would require some sort of infrastructure or some sort of, uh, some sort of additional water supply strategy to be built. And as you can see, they actually add to their remaining shortage or remaining surplus in that first decade, but then the existing surplus is equal to their secondary need. And that's going to change depending upon which, which entity we're talking about. Looking at the city of Cross Plains, they too have surpluses all the way across, but we have conservation in every decade of the plan for them because in every decade, their projected per capita use is greater than 140. And looking at, uh, for, for mining, uh, this is one of those county aggregated demands. We, they do have shortages, so we will implement water conservation within that, that mining water user group for Callahan County. Saves them on the order of tens of acre feet, not a whole lot of water savings. We haven't yet determined the costs for those yet. And then to, which gives us their secondary need, basically for looking at year 2030, 227 acre feet per year is their need. We've reduced that by 11 acre feet through conservation. Their secondary need is now 216 acre feet. And then we've, we're recommending that they go to some form of Trinity groundwater within the county to meet their remaining need of roughly 210 to 220 acre feet per year. Relatively modest needs that we're talking about here. And this is, this, this is based upon us looking at remaining availability from the Trinity aquifer in Callahan County without exceeding the modeled available groundwater. So that groundwater is available. So we won't put a groundwater strategy up here if it will cause us to exceed the mag. I'm looking at ERAF, or uh, Falls County now. We have uh, the county other municipal water user group ends up having a shortage in 2070. And we are recommending additional groundwater development. Um, didn't identify in the table um, what aquifer that would come from. That's an oversight on our part. We'll have to put that in there. But just out in 2060 and 2070 is when they would need to drill a well to, or multiple wells, because it is a county aggregated water use to meet those shortages. You'll see we have conservation as a strategy, but we have a zero supply from conservation because their per capita water use is less than 140. So we wanted to show that so that this secondary need number makes sense. So it's going to be a consistent table 
throughout the entire text of the plan. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. And then looking at Falls County, we have a few more water user groups. Um, some of our counties, we're going to have two pages of these tables, or two slides of these tables to give you an idea of some of the scale we're talking about here. And we do have multiple water user groups that do have projected shortages. Uh, Tri-County, West Brazos, WSC, manufacturing, mining. So we show you the plans that we have for them. Looking at the city of Marlin, they uh, want to build Brushy Creek Reservoir. That's been in their plan for the last, I guess, three planning cycles. So the first, they don't have a shortage, but they do have a gallons per capita day water usage greater than 140. So we have conservation, uh, saving them uh, hundreds of acre feet or actually in this case adding to their supply. So you end up with a secondary need or a secondary uh, surplus that's greater than what their existing surplus is because now they're saving some more of their water. And then we've added on Brushy Creek Reservoir because that is a strategy that they've asked us to, to implement in the Region G plan. This is a strategy that we're still updating. Uh, so these costs and supplies are from the 2011 plan. We just put those in there as a placeholder and marked it as such in this table so you'd recognize that. Tri-County Special Utility District has projected needs throughout the entire planning process, but their Gallons per capita today is less than 140, so they get zero from their from their conservation. Secondary need is the same as their original need, and then we've we've got them going and getting a modest amount of groundwater uh, to meet those needs. And West Brazos WC is in is in the exact same situation. And then looking at Falls County Manufacturing, uh, they have a projected balance of one acre foot. We didn't, I don't think we had a manufacturing need or demand in Falls County in the 2011 plan. It's a relatively modest demand this round of planning. And so we're assuming that the city of Marlin would be able to supply one acre foot of manufacturing need as one of the larger cities in the county. So that countywide aggregated, they would purchase their water from city of Marlin. That's what we're recommending as a plan there. And then looking at mining, uh, this is kind of an interesting one. We have irrigation as, uh, as showing a surplus of supply for this county. And so the, what we're, what we're re recommending in the plan is a reallocation of some of the irrigation supplies to mining. Rather than going after an <coughs> additional groundwater development or something else, this is a reasonable way of doing it. And then looking at Hill County, there's a few more water user groups, only one of which has a, a projected uh, need, which is the county other. And looking at Hills, uh, city of Hillsboro, we've got conservation for them, even though they don't have a need because their, their uh, count per capita day is greater than 140. And the same thing with White Bluff and the city of Whitney is, is in the same situation. And then for Hill County other, uh, they have one small shortage out in 2070. It can easily be met by one or more small wells, depending upon where those entities actually are that are going to be short of water. Those are at the sub WUG level. So it could be individual residences. It could be small water supply corporations that serve less than 500 people. And then for mining, They've got some, uh, some deficits in the early decades of the plan, the first two decades. So then we added a short-term groundwater supply to that for a, for a recommended plan. So anyway, that's the, that kind of hits most of the situations that you're likely to see. I wanted to explain what that secondary need line was. That's different from the 2011 plan and 2006 plans. Just so you have an understanding of why we're putting certain numbers in the table. And uh, thank you for, for going with option number two. That'll make things a, a lot easier to present the information. I think it'll make things proceed a lot smoother between now and May. Yes, Dale Spurgeon. David, is there any way to maybe footnote it or indicate if there was really no change from the 2011 plan 
if you follow in my I know you've added some new lines and stuff, but you know, if the demand and needs really haven't changed from the old plan, is there any way to indicate that rather than spend a lot of time pouring over information that really hadn't changed? I would probably recommend that if the strategies haven't changed, because everybody's demand has changed to some extent. Okay. Everybody's supplies have changed to some extent, even if it's by a few acre feet. So what's that cutoff between having not changed versus having changed. It might be better to, to identify what's different in terms of recommended strategies from the 2011 plan. But that, yeah, I just thought maybe make it a little more efficient yeah. you know, when we're reviewing lots of information. If it's basically the same as what it was in the 2011 plan, I don't know if we want to spend a whole lot of time pouring over that. But okay. Just a suggestion. No, I think that's a fine idea. Would you like it flagged in the text somewhere? Would you like it flagged just on the table? Or or would you like it flagged in the email that we send that transmits it? I'll leave that up to you. Okay. Okay, we'll clearly identify what things are new or what new strategies there are in this plan that weren't in the 2011. Um, even when we move forward to groundwater strategy, the volume may be different, but it's still groundwater from the Trinity or groundwater from the Creeds of Wilcox. If the volumes have changed some, we won't mark that as having changed, only if it's a new new supply for that water user group. Okay. okay. That that's a good idea, Dan. Any, any other questions for David? Uh, yes, Tommy O'Brien. I have a question about uh, the conservation. It, it, if you could just flip to the Marlin chart. Sure. Because my question really applies to all of the different municipalities. And I'm mainly looking at the uh, recommended plan costs by decade. Yeah. So if you look at 2040, are, are you saying that right now their GPCD is 497 acre feet per year? No. no. 140 gallon <laughs> capita per day. I can't do what I just did. In 2040, <laughs> Their gallons per capita today is greater than 140. But I don't know how much greater it is. But we don't know how much but greater somehow, it is. somehow, whatever that difference is, you've got 357. Yes. When we apply the conservation strategy and it reduces their GPCD, that's the savings in water usage that they would realize. So I see where I was wrong. My other question is, how are you coming up with the annual cost? The and annual cost is more than just... Uh, toilets and sinks and plumbing fixtures. Right. When we uh, looked at water conservation as an adva at advanced water conservation as a water management strategy, we identified several best management practices. <coughs> Excuse me, several best management practices. And we looked at an average cost for implementing those best management practices and said that's the general cost per acre foot of water savings for municipal conservation. And that number varies between the size and type of municipality. I think there's three different uh, costs based upon the size and whether it's a rural community or a more urban community. In, in which best management practices did you use? Oh, I mean, the Southern Water Board has over a dozen. We, we included most of those in there and said that <coughs> not all of them have an accurate cost. So we took the ones that we knew cost for and said some mix of these best management practices would result in, in savings that would get you a 1% per year until you get to 140. And then we use those costs that were presented in <coughs> out of board's report. It's very inexact how we get those costs. Uh, these are really just rule of thumb. I don't know if WAG's the proper number, proper term for it, but I wouldn't place any real credence on those costs. We have to put some cost in the plan. No one really has accurate cost data in terms of what a conservation program costs in dollars per acre foot savings, particularly when you're throwing in mixes of BMPs and you start throwing in the vagaries of uh, water usage over time, it's very hard for anybody to tease out those numbers. So we did the best we can. It's similar to what we've done in the 2006 and 2011 plans. And I can send you the, the information again that we've written up for water conservation so you can review that as well. 
Well, it, it, I continue to struggle with the municipalities when we hung our hat on that 140 GPCD, and you know, it, it, you've got a city that's got a water loss of five or six or seven percent, but the GPCD may be, you know, 150 or something. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what what they're going to do. So. May not be water loss prevention. It may be better education of the public, limits to outdoor irrigation, uh, toilet retrofit programs. That you know, those sorts of things. Turf turf replacement programs, that sort of thing. Their water loss is 15 or 20 percent, and it's due to you know leaks. Yeah, they're going to spend a whole lot more than these unit costs to replace a system like that. Right. And I, I don't know. I, I'm just not. We still have a problem with yeah. that. Water main replacement is not one of the BMPs that we've identified. We did look at a separate water line replacement strategy that was related to conservation <coughs> as a subset of conservation. And we looked at some of those numbers and I don't remember, about a year, a year and a half ago, we looked at that and presented the, the results of our analysis and there was such a wide range of of numbers and costs, and then we start to look at what does it cost to replace a mile of water line versus the savings that you would get from that. And if you look at it just on a cost basis, it doesn't it doesn't play out. It's cheaper to go get more water and continue to leak it from your pipes, which is a sad situation, but it costs a lot of money to replace that infrastructure. And that's different than leak leak repair. I'm talking about wholesale. Uh, water line replacement in a program, which many municipalities do, but it's part of the savings in ongoing maintenance and just a routine uh, method to get the system to perform better. If you look at it in terms of just water savings, you can't justify it. Whereas these other conservation BMPs, probably justify going into a conservation program and spending the education dollars and other things that are part of those BMPs in order to reduce your your demand for water. The whole leak preve prevention and leak detection is a separate issue. And you're right, it gets a lot more expensive than $470 per acre foot. David, to follow up on that just from a business standpoint, Tommy's the on the city council of city of Marlin, and what we're asking him is, you've got 515 when you start your conservation, spend four and a half, five million <coughs> over 50 years to double it. Is that the business proposition? That's yeah. That based upon those are those are the surplus that they have at that top line. Right, and then okay. you do the conservation is the middle one, right? And then you by 2070 you've more than doubled. Uh, 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 Actually, surplus. tripled what that surplus is. So right, they and spend about four and a half million doing it, but you have the security blanket of a lot more supply exactly. than you could possibly need. You're using the supplies you have a lot more efficiently. So, right. in the regional water planning parlance, it can, we count that as a new supply, sort of found water, if you will. So, Marlin's in a unique situation. There's not many where you see that kind of this surplus, positive. and then conservation will get them even that much further. You don't <coughs> see that very often. Thank you. And Marlin's old enough, I would imagine a lot of, uh, they could reduce a lot of that water use and, and re reduce their GPCD substantially through a water main replacement program. Because that's not part of where that $474 per acre foot comes from. Any other questions for David? We don't need to do anything for these four today, do we? No. Okay. No, in fact, I'd, yeah, we'll we'll adopt all of these at one time okay. at the very end. Once you've had a chance to review them and vet them, ask me questions, and then we'll take the IPP and you'll adopt the IPP as a whole. One, one last question. When, when you said we're going to have those three meetings by region, northern, central, and southern, I guess, mm -hmm. Are the packages going to come to us in that order? In other words, you're going to do all the, because in the time frame, you're going to have to send us to Northern first? Well, we're having those on three consecutive days of what our plan oh, okay. is. Okay. So we'll have all this done, yeah, and then you. we'll go out and talk to the Northern, Central, and Southern portions of the right, region. Right, right. And then there may be changes after that that we'll have to make before we meet again in April, which would be 
more of a mid to late April time frame mm -hmm. because there may be changes that we'll have to make before we bring the plan to you for final adoption. Okay, I got you. Yeah. Okay, you know, the questions for David. All right, uh, just a reminder for everybody, if you would, maybe move your microphones up a little bit. This is being recorded. It was a little bit hard of hearing some of y'all a while ago. Uh, that would help a great bit. All right, uh, agenda item 6.7.3, presentation of agenda for the January 21st, 2015 Williamson County meeting. David? All right, we've, uh, we've scheduled a meeting with Williamson County entities for January 21st, which is a Thursday, I believe. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I believe it's Thursday from 9 to noon at the... Trey, correct me if I'm wrong, the Georgetown Utility Offices? Okay. In Georgetown. <coughs> this is why we're having this meeting. Uh, this table here shows us what the projected shortages are for those entities in Williamson County who have needs. So it's not a summation of the pluses and minuses, it's just a summation of those entities that have shortages. So get the context of what this is as well. The numbers would be less if you throw in some of the folks that have surpluses, but we really want to look at just the needs that we're planning for. By 2070, it's about 160,000 acre feet. When we apply advanced conservation to those entities that are greater than 140 gallons per capita a day, which I believe is most of them, we get that down to 132,000 acre feet. That's essentially four Lake Granger firm yields, more or less think about it. So it's a lot, we're talking about a lot of water that needs to be provided for in Williamson County. <coughs> That's more than what can be met with the strategies that we've currently identified in the 2011 plan for Williamson County entities. Uh, and so we need to coordinate with those entities in Williamson County, with those folks who live there to see how they would like us to formulate a plan for them. Some of them don't necessarily agree with these demands and shortages. They, but they may agree that the entire county is going to grow. They may not feel that their specific entity is going to grow as much. And so the question we have for them is, okay, are those people going to come to Williamson County? They may not be coming to your town, but they may be next door. And so whether we have them on, at, in your utility or have them in a neighboring utility, you believe those people are coming is really the first question you have. So this is, this is the format of the meeting. We've invited uh, all of the water user groups and also water providers that are interested in Williamson County. For example, cities of Cedar Park, Round Rock, Liberty Hill, Leander, Georgetown, uh, Rushy Creek Mud, some of the, everybody that's a water user group will get an invitation to this meeting or has gotten an invitation to this meeting. We've invited the Williamson County Commissioners and Judge Gaddis to attend as well. And this is the agenda. This is the, the order that we would like to present this information to them and guide this discussion. It's going to be more of a workshop format led, led by Corey and myself. And first off, introductions, and then I'm going to start stating the problem. Here are the population projections and water demands for Williamson County. And some folks feel that their water demands are too high, <coughs> others feel theirs are too low. But when you look at the entirety of Williamson County, do you believe this many people will be moving here to Williamson County in this planning horizon? And if you believe that, and then, then the, this many people will be using this amount of water. Whether it's in your town or not in your town is, is immaterial when we're talking about this amount of water supply that we need. Those people are if you believe they're coming and they're going to be using this amount of water, then that 160,000 is spread out amongst everybody in the county. And then we'll present their supplies and show them what those needs are, what those individual shortages are, and what those shortages are for the county as a whole. And then I'd like to discuss, really make the point <coughs> that we can't just assume we can go east to the Crees of Wilcox Aquifer, to Milam and Burleson and Robertson counties <laughs> to meet that groundwater, or that, those demands. They may feel they can do that individually, 
and they can go ahead and pursue that and deal with local groundwater conservation districts in that way. But we can't put that into the regional water plan because that amount of water would exceed the modeled available groundwater that we're by <coughs> statute required to stay within. So we have to put something else in the plan besides what appears in most cases to be the simplest solution of just going 30 to 50 miles east for groundwater. That's really the point I need to make to them is that we will be developing a regional water plan that includes Williamson County, that will include these large needs, but we will have to include something that is not where many of them probably thought <coughs> they could go to for water. And whether they go that direction or not, that's a different story. We have to put something in the regional plan that falls within the rules. So we've got several options that I'm going to present to them and get their general consensus on what we ought to do. The first option is we can say if you don't believe that those needs are going to happen, we can just assume that those needs are going to be unmet in the plan. And that has obviously some, some ramifications. It becomes an official state document, the Regional Water Plan does. We're showing Williamson County is not being able to meet its projected water demands. If that happens, chances are maybe that growth is not going to happen in Williamson County because businesses and industry are not going to want to relocate there. My guess is that's not what they're going to want us to show. Um, they may want us to show that as maybe a shot fired across the bow that we really do want to go east for groundwater or prevent it from putting that into the plan because of the <coughs> of the mag cap and this may be a way for them to make a message i'm just going to lay that out there that is one option an, an, another option is very similar and that is uh drought management that's assuming that during a repeat of the drought or record that you're not going to meet a certain portion of those demands and so those needs will go away uh, we have a statement in the 2006 and 2011 plans that basically says drought management is not consistent with long-range regional planning because it's planning to not meet needs. But it is an option. It means that in most years you've got the water, but during those drought years you've got to go into draconian measures to reduce your water use, which would be things like eliminating any outdoor water use, that sort of thing. Uh, that's something we could put in the plan for them if that's what they want us to show. Um, then we could go with additional conservation. You know, we've hung our hat on 140 gallons per capita day. We have water user groups in Region G that are under 100 gallons per capita day water use. So we've looked at a couple options where we yeah. reduce that to either 130 by year 2050 or 120 by year 2070. And it saves anywhere between 960 <coughs> and about 36,000 acre feet a year. But even going down to 120 is not going to get us up to this number right here, 132,000. So that's, uh, that's something to consider as well. It may get you part of the way there. It's not going to get us all the way there. We have current strategies identified for, for Williamson County in the 2011 plan that will pull forward into the 2016. First is a high lake supply from... Uh, from the LCRA Lake Travis uh, through the Brushy Creek Regional Utility Authority. That's going to bring in about 69,000 acre feet per year is what they've told us they've, they've contracted for and have available once that project gets built out. Lake Greater Augmentation is a Brazos River Authority project uh, that by overdrafting Lake Ranger and supplementing it with, with groundwater, we can increase the supply from the Lake Ranger system up, up around in the Taylor area. We've only looked at the phase one, which is the Trinity Aquifer Wells uh, supplementing because the rest of that Lake Ranger Augmentation Project assumes that you can go east for, for, for additional large volumes of groundwater. So when you look at just the phase one, it's about 17,000 acre feet per year supply. We've thrown in the Little River Off Channel Reservoir. It's a project we've looked at since the 2001 plan. It's uh, less environmentally, I don't want to say damaging, it has less environmental impacts than the larger Little River on-channel reservoir would have. This would be 
a diversion station on the Little River that would pump into a, a small valley that would get dammed up. Uh, creates about 35,000 acre feet per year of supply. So if you add all those up, we still have a significant shortage if we decide to recommend Little River as one of the strategies for Williamson County needs. I will tell you that Region H probably has their eye on Little River off channel as well. So that's some coordination we're going to have to do with Region H. And then there's some other regional strategies. Corey talked to you about this, I think the last planning group meeting or the one prior, about some out-of-the-box ideas that we have that we want to bring up to them and see if there's something that they would like to see us look at. First is uh, pulling water out of Lake Whitney. W Lake Whitney is often in its flood pool. Corps of Engineers operates Lake Whitney to, to drop the water storage in Lake Whitney down to its conservation pool as quickly as it can but without flooding anybody downstream. So there's often weeks that Lake Whitney is in its flood pool that you can pull some of that water off, store it in an off-channel reservoir and have that be a supply. There is, is a potential for building off-channel reservoirs down along the main stem of the Brazos and some of the valleys that lead into the main stem of the Brazos and store floodwaters in those off-channel reservoirs. You can do one or more of those. We would need to identify some locations and do a little bit of research to figure out where some, some uh, reasonable locations might be. That's another option. And then we talked about bringing in water from the Red River, which would be to the east of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex and it would be a big pipeline that would bring water over and drop it in somewhere along the main stem of the Brazos, either Possum Kingdom or down below Possum Kingdom. Uh, there's more than sufficient water there that's, that's, that's unutilized in any regional water plan that Texas has the water rights to. It's, it's down below where most of the high salinity water occurs, so the water is relatively fresh. That would be a, what I call a multi-regional strategy because we would have to cooperate with Region C and maybe Region B on them getting water from that project as well, probably to make it economically feasible. Just because the water's there doesn't mean it's economically feasible to bring it that far over the Brazos Basin, but it is one of those out-of-the-box ideas. And then there's, there's a couple options we can look at in the Trinity Basin as well. Some folks have developed projects that are not utilizing right now may not be utilizing the foreseeable future that we could tap into and bring over into the Brazos Basin. So that's the sort of strategies that we are going to be approaching the Williamson County folks with and get a consensus on what they would like to see in the plan for their county. So what we put in there matches what they intend to do. That's the whole purpose of this bottom-up process. So that's going to be a fun meeting. Uh, if we have, I think if we have a certain form of planning group members there, we'll have to call it as an open meeting. Um, I believe if we have a certain number of Williamson County Commissioners there, we'll have to do the same thing. But it'll be in a workshop format. We're planning a three-hour discussion. Maybe it'll go longer. I don't know how long we've got the room scheduled for, if we can go longer or not. But I, I, I'd like to get some sense of direction from them before we leave that room so that what we put in the plan is the the folks in Lincoln County can agree to. Okay, this was this is for information for y'all so y'all know what's going on. And, and I know you may have some questions, and I know Gary Westbrook has one. Go ahead. So, if if a decent percentage of the water utilities in that room are considering uh, future use of the Trinity Aquifer, do you have any information? that would show them that that may only be a short-term solution that may lead to longer-term problems? I believe we have very little remaining available water in the Trinity Aquifer that we could actually utilize for water management uh, strategy. I mean, I think that would be a, a helpful part of the discussion. Right. We will lay out the entire groundwater situation because okay. there's the Trinity, there's Crees of Wilcox, there's the... Um, well, there's Morgan a lot of, Edwards, yeah, there's just a lot of folks children. there that are yeah. depending on that, and, and it looks like uh, as they grow and uh, and more, um, yeah, yeah, you know, more um, subdivisions go in, it seems like, you know, a lot of them are depending on new wells, and, and I think that's going to probably create a situation in, in that area, in that aquifer that's not going to be sustainable for very long. 
I or agree. at least it, it, it appears that way to me. Right. We will lay out okay. what, what the model available groundwater is that they do or do not have available to them from from not not just the Simsboro and Prince of Wales. They don't exceed but, that anyway. Pardon? I said I believe they already exceed that anyway, don't they? I believe they probably do. And so we can't put anything else into the plan. So in some ways we're going to be fighting between reality and what people are actually pursuing versus what we have to show on the plan and sadly sometimes there's there's a disconnect there because of the rules that we have to work under for planning and they need to understand that as well and tell us how they would like us to go forward because this will be a public document that people do look at I've had people call me up about the Brazos plan before wanting to know specific information on a certain city's water supply situation based and wanting to get understanding of how those numbers were developed. Sure. And a couple of times it's been industries that were interested in locating to a city. Good. A question for you, David. Um, just uh, be, the reason or, or you know, with, with my situation or our situation down, down in the south part of the region and Burleson County specifically, um, a lot of the, the, you know, in the last plan, a lot of that, that groundwater and everything was part of the strategy for Williamson County. And um, even though we knew that the San Antonio issue existed, um, but we couldn't say anything about the San Antonio issue because it was, it, that's where that disconnect of reality and what has to be in the plan occurred and then um, so that's what's thrown a lot of this up and everything is so now because the contract is in place um, for that groundwater out of the Carrizo so it's, it's that groundwater now considered whenever you do the county plans how's that going to show up in Burleson County? Well that is really up, up to this planning group to decide right now our understanding is that Region L the South Central Texas Water Planning Group is going to include that project in their regional water plan. If we decide that we want to utilize that same source of supply, then we will have a um, what's the right word for? Conflict. Thank you. A conflict between the two regions that we will have to work out. And when it gets really bad, the Water Development Board comes in and helps mediate what those conflicts are. What this planning group has typically done, that if somebody has a contract for water, willing buyer, willing seller, and has a contract, then our plan will reflect that. And what that means is that water in Burleson County is off the table for use in Region G. I like to say to folks that we own our demands, but we don't own our supplies. So supplies are owned by the state. Anybody can come into any region and, and utilize supplies. But we do own the demands. So we can go outside of our region for supplies as well. Obviously, if, if we're looking at a supply that another region is looking at, we have to work out how we avoid that conflict as well. Right. I believe it was pointed out to me several years ago when I first got on the, this board and everything that, that we are precluded from taking any action that would be contradictory to an existing contract. Is, 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 is that my understanding of that correct? Pretty well. I mean, yeah, if you want to put it that way. If we're not precluded from that, this group has never acted in yeah. that way. So it would, it would be different from how this group has acted in the past to ignore that San Antonio contract yeah. for water from Burleson County and assume that it can be used elsewhere. Okay. Uh, Judy Parker has a question. Uh, my question is actually kind of along the same lines as far as reality and just putting something in the plan. And it, it's about the Red River supply. Mm -hmm. um, I know it sounds good and it looks good on paper, but in, in reality, there's absolutely no way we would ever get that water from Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, they're they're going to want that water, and if they want it, they're going to get it. So is it really a feasible option to put it in our plan for Williamson County? Well, right now, what we're, what we're looking at is there's over a half a million acre feet of water available. That's a lot of water available. There would be more than enough to serve the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex with a lot of <coughs> surplus available. So it is a it, it is an out of the box. I'll admit, look at things, but when you start looking at the volumes of water that we're talking about, it begins to look 
more and more reasonable, particularly when you start getting other regions and other large entities and groups of entities involved in those projects. So there is su sufficient water there for Dallas to get what they would need in addition to whatever other projects Dallas is looking at and what Region G would need and, and maybe even Region B as well. Yeah, that's a good question, Judy, but it I is. think I agree with David that, I mean, some of these, as we go into the future, we're going to have to start. Our box has got to get bigger and bigger and bigger. David, uh, thanks for doing this. This is my home county, and we need it. We're going to be out of water. One of the things we've talked about is the calculation of GPCD. Could you define that in this meeting? I can see 10 years from now having a big argument because Cedar Park's counting it this way, Georgetown's counting it another way, so they're not achieving the overall goal. Could we get everybody in that county under the same formula? It's just a what if, because I think eventually that's going to come up and bite us. And also, if we have all the current strategies and the additional conservation, we barely meet the 132, right? I mean, you'd have to do all of that to avoid this problem. You'd have to do, yes, you'd have to do all of that to avoid the problem. Let's go back and look at the numbers again. We'll and I was just using 25,000 under the additional mm -hmm. conservation kind of middle road. Okay. Uh, you come up with about 140, I think, if the math's right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess what I'm asking is, what are we trying to leave with these city leaders and county leaders is, <coughs> there's a wolf at the door, things have to change, and you're going to have to do it collectively, right? Generally, yes. Okay, and we want you to help us with the strategies to accomplish that. Yes. Okay. I want, we, we have to develop a regional water plan. We have certain constraints on how we, how we develop the plan, and we need them to recognize and understand those constraints, and within those constraints, what do they want us to show? Yep. And of all the counties, this county is the worst in our region, correct? It, yes, okay. it is. It hasn't always been Williamson County. A couple planning cycles ago, it was Johnson County, with all that growth coming from the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. But Folks have done things to augment water supplies in Johnson County where they're, they're not a problem child anymore. It's shifted south to Williamson County. Thank you. Hey, David, question? Sure. Yeah. Um, keying off what Gary said, you know, it's a, the wolf at the door and the city and county leaders. Looking at the invitation list, it looks pretty limited. I mean, if we're really trying to make a point to those folks that they need to kick into the planning process and get involved and figure out what they're going to do. Is it, can we expand that list a little bit? Even the state representative and things like that? We, we could, if that's what you want us to do. I'm just throwing it out there. Joe, we talked about that a little bit. We went in and talked to you about that. We thought we might have bring this nuclear group in first and especially get the cities and the county together, and then we'd have another meeting once everybody's had a chance to absorb it and kind of reach out farther, I think it's what we talked about. Exactly. This this meeting is, there's been talk about having a Williamson County group form to look at long-range water supply problems in Williamson County. And that's different from, the you know, that's a longer-term process okay. than developing the 2016 regional plan. So we're kind of looking at this, for lack of a better term, as a stopgap how do you want us to address this in this plan? It may not be the long-term direction that the county goes. They may come back nine months from now or a year from now or two years from now with something completely different than what we put in the plan. But what I don't want to do is put something in the plan for Williamson County that we did in a vacuum that no one in the county agrees with or no one understands why it's there. I was just thinking, you know, if you had the user groups and the cities are user groups, but you're not going to have the real leaders, you're going to have probably an administrator who's over the water system. I just, just that's my thought. Sure. <clears throat> no, I, I think at some point those elected representatives need to get involved in this process as well. Um, I don't know if this workshop would be the right environment for that. Yes, uh, Phil. There's an, kind of another sidebar to that. What we find when we go out, uh, people all of a sudden now, uh, you ask them, uh, 
Are you aware of the Brazos G and the state water planning? No. Uh, they, they assume themselves to be an island, and if the communists down in Austin won't fix it, well, they will fix it themselves. <laughs> So education is a wonderful thing if you can get people to stay on the ship with you long enough before they start slashing their wrists. Mm -hmm. uh, when I walked out with Kathleen just now, I said, you know, there's a thing here. I said, uh, whenever David's up here saying there's nothing over in the east as far as the groundwater goes now. And so the question is, why is that? I said, it was, it's been in the last three state water plans at Region G and uh, Region H, we're all going to share this, and this was going to be a, a strategy in order to satisfy that need. Well, San Antonio came in, uh, made, it, made their own deal outside of the water plan, and now here we are uh, paddling the water thinking, boy, I sure thought I had my life vest on, but I must have got out and forgot it. So, and I told her, I said, this is some real, y'all need to think about that. And I said, this is a state issue. I mean, how can you solve it? Politically, you almost can't because a guy that would say, okay, we're going to let them have the water, he's going to get reelected. And so the politics of all this, the uh, this is my water, not your water, whether it be surface or ground, and how we manage both of those uh, to collectively satisfy the, the need is a, is, is a tremendous, tremendous problem. And so... Uh, <coughs> We may have to get in Gary's business and uh, let the Lord come in and take care of some of this because we're not going to be able to take care of all that. And uh, I'm. Uh, prayer meeting right now. <laughs> and and, and uh, does Wibbs kind of who do they have priority over? Who are they? Who are they behind? What does that? What does their decision do to this group? And and what our construct uh, is. You go out now and you talk about uh, you go about, uh, talk about environmental flows and everybody's going, I can we not do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you if you abide the law and you buy what we're doing. And then you say you get the boys the, the politicians in, that's kind of scary. Back because uh, it's all about it's all about me. It's not about how do we solve this thing collectively. I don't, and I don't have a solution. Yeah. I know that we go down, a, we go down a road, and it's, uh, you know, it's first and ten, first and ten, then all of a sudden, a safety, and I'm seventy yards from the other end, now I get a safety call on. So, uh, again, I don't have the solutions, but I see what the drought has exacerbated this thing. It's sped it up, and water that we thought we had, we may not have. We were planning on using the old, the old numbers. So it's a, it's a, it's a tremendous problem. Well said. Just to follow up on what, follow on what Phil said as well. I mean, this is even an issue for, for San Antonio Water System. They've got that contract. From my understanding, their contract is for fifty thousand acre feet of water. The Region L plan will only show roughly thirty-five thousand because that's all we have remaining under the mesh. So even SAW's plans won't be fully identified in the Region L plan either. And that, that will tend to be an issue for San Antonio. Will it show up in the East Texas plan? Because it's coming from there? Where, where is the kept score? It's just the water's disappearing? Region L? It, it's it'll keep score it, it'll be kept score in the database uh -huh. so that statewide database includes created the Wilcox groundwater supply that mag in, in in this case Burleson County we put in the, the current demands on that supply the current users of that supply and then the the difference between that and the mag is the amount that we have available that we can utilize for water management strategies Region L will go in and put in that SAWS project for roughly 35,000 acre feet because that's all the remaining mag and then we'll show zero and if we come in and put another project in that will utilize that and make that zero go negative the database will spit it out and say you can't do that. Any other questions for David? All right, well, let's go to 6.7.4.
update on schedule for preparation of initi initially prepared 2016 Brazos G Regional Water Plan. We really don't have much of an update. This is the same schedule that we presented last time. So if you want to review this in a little more detail at your leisure, just to know what to expect. I am anticipating that the February meeting will be a long meeting in comparison to this. The March meeting will be even longer. Uh, we have a lot of information to go through, and this always happens as we get towards, towards the plan adoption period. There have been cycles where we've had three meetings in a month to go through some of this information, or we've had two-day meetings. So this is not unusual. Uh, I imagine both of those meetings, particularly the March one, may go most of the day. It won't be a 1.30 to 4 type of meeting. We're going to have to schedule a longer period of time for those, for those two days. And I would suggest having those meetings start at 9, 9.30, or 10, rather than 1.30. As we get a little closer and we know a little bit better how long we think they'll be, then we'll, we'll try to adjust the starting times on those. So, you want to talk about the Emergency Connects Committee, when they need to meet? You have them down for February? That's, you're still... We're, yeah, there's a, uh, the Scope of Work Committee has been tasked with uh, presenting a standalone analysis of emergency connections to the Water Development Board. The board says that has to be outside of the regular planning documents and treated as a confidential, uh, as confidential piece of pieces of information. We're in the process of accumulating that information. We'll get it out to the Scope of Work Committee. And they're planning on having them meet in February prior to the planning group meeting to approve us sending that to the board. Uh, it should take us another couple of weeks to get that figured out and and develop and present it to the, to, to the members of the Scope of Work Committee. It's one of those additional planning items that got put into the rules this round of planning that we haven't done before. Okay. Uh, Mike McGuire, was the Water Policy Committee going to meet in February? I missed the tail end of the Depends on meeting. Depends on what we do this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> All right. I mean, that's fine. We just have to coordinate some of that. Okay, any questions on any of the proposed schedule before we move on? Okay, let's go. We'll move to agenda item 6.8, discussion and possible action on brush control water management strategies. Are you going to do this one too, David? <laughs> <laughs> you going to let Corey say anything? Not today. Not today, okay. No. <laughs> He's driving. <laughs> <laughs> We're just here just to keep me in line today. So. Good luck with that. Uh, we talked about this at the last couple of planning group meetings. Uh, there have been the Texas State Stormwater Conservation Board has a grant funding program to pay for folks to clear brush from their property. Uh, it's a water enhancement program is what they call it, the Texas Water Enhancement Program, maybe the, the name of the program. Uh, one of their rules for funding is that your project must be in some way supported by the regional water plan in which you're, you're located. Uh, what they do is they look, they look to the state water plan for that information. Uh, the state water plan has a section in the table that identifies where, uh, which regions have brush control or range management as a supported water management strategy. Region G was left off that list. We have for several counties, I think four counties, one of them is young, off the top of my head, where we have recommended brush control or range management as a recommended water management strategy. We have a policy recommendation that's in support of uh, brush control and range management practices. Uh, somehow we got left off that list in the state water plan. So there have been several instances where individuals have come for grant funding to the Texas State Soil and Water Conservation Board for a brush project, brush control project, and have been declined because the soil board did not see it in the state plan. Uh, to forego this in ensuing years, 
Uh, we met with the board with, with a representative from the state soil board uh, and I went and met with representatives from the Texas Water Health Board to discuss the problem and see how we could mitigate this issue into the future. And what we had decided was, was to develop a generalized water management strategy that would have uh, a conjecturized cost and a water savings of zero so that we wouldn't have to actually determine the yield that it would approach, but, but a generalized program would become the water management strategy in Region G for brush control. It wouldn't specify a certain area, a specific project, because we don't know that information. And we developed it. It's about a five or six page document. It lists different types of brush control. It identifies the areas within Region G and within the rest of the state where the Soil Board has done pilot studies or has studies planned or has ongoing programs. And we basically say that any project within those areas identified by the Soil Board is consistent with and is a recommended strategy in the regional water plan. Well, the board reviewed it, came back and said, in order for it to be an evaluated water management strategy, it has to be more specific. What method of brush control, where is it going to happen, what are the specific environmental impacts of that brush control program? And of course, we don't know that because we don't know what the projects are. So basically, they flushed that idea. Uh, which leads us to we still need to figure out how we add in brush control as a water management strategy in the 2016 plan so that folks that come to the soil board that are located within the Region G area aren't turned down for funding for their brush control projects. If this planning group wants to support brush control as a, as a uh, water management strategy. Um, we've had a couple of ideas uh, of how to proceed from there. One idea is to ask those entities that have had their projects turned down to provide us that information and we will put those specific projects in the plan. If we do that, that'll, that'll be more than specific enough to meet the board's requirements. We'll have costs, we'll have estimated yields, we'll have exact locations and areas that are going to be identified uh, and that, that will be a strategy in the plan similar to building a reservoir or drilling a new groundwater well or running a pipeline from point A to point B. It would just be on the same level as that. Is that basically half done in other regions? It typically is. Um, from what I can tell, other regions have brush control as a recommended strategy, but it's typically a specific watershed approach, is my understanding. We were hoping this generalized approach would work because no one has come to the planning group and asked to have their project put in the regional water plan, so we haven't had that knowledge to do that. Uh, what we would do now is, is ask Judge Spurgeon in particular to contact those folks, he knows who they are, and have them request that we put that strategy in the plan. Uh, that's, that's one thing. We will not have a 2017 state water plan for maybe another year and a half. So there's another year and a half of these funding opportunities that are going to be lost for these folks. So we also want to consider the option of asking the Water Development Board to amend the state water plan to identify Region G as being supportive of brush control and range management. We can point to specific places in the G plan from 2011 where we are. It just got missed as the board compiled that information. So it would be more of a clerical correction to the state water plan, but from my understanding, because it would be an amendment to the state water plan, it would require 30 days advance notice and a 60-day public comment period following before they could actually amend the state plan. Whether or not the board would be amenable to that, I, I don't know. But looking back, that's how we would have to make things available for the next year and a half for folks that are coming to the state soil board for, for funding. And looking forward, we would need to have those specific projects in the plan identified in the 2016 plan for those projects to get funded by the state soil board. Now what would happen then is if somebody else comes in with a different project for the state soil board, the soil board would see that brush control is a recommended strategy somewhere in Region G and they would be eligible for funding. So it's really these guys would be the, <coughs> would have to pay the cost to get in and then everybody else that follows them wouldn't have to have their specific strategies in the plan. 
and that's where we're at. Um, kind of at a loss of what to do from here without your direction. We, you know, we need to look back and say, how do we help folks that for the next year and a half are coming to the state soil board for funding? And then what do we want to do that will facilitate things after the 2017 state water plan is adopted? Dale, do you have anything to add? No, I think it's that ideally we could get the correction because clearly when you read the regional water plan, it's identified, I mean, multiple locations. So obviously this group has supported brush control as a water man management strategy. It's just not in the state water plan. And so I think that's a great idea to ask for an amendment to the existing state water plan. And then there are two locations, Palo Pinto and Fort Phantom, that have already had their studies done by the Soil and Water Conservation District folks. You know, those studies have been prepared, but they just need to be put into the new regional water plan so that it would be included in the new state water plan. And as, you know, these projects are planned, uh, they just need to come to the planning group, sounds like, and be very specific and provide that information to get that included into the regional water plan. Now, again, my question is, is that considered a minor or major amendment you know, as a new project pops up to get it included, or is it going to be enough adequate language for future uh, projects that there won't be a required amendment? We've got enough language in there for qualifying them for the state soil funding. And that's a question I guess we need to really talk to the state board, soil board, about if that <coughs> meets their criteria. Right. That, that's a question I would have for the state soil board. If we get one specific brush control strategy in the plan and the state water plan recognizes that, is that sufficient for anybody who may come to the state soil board within Region G with a brush control project? Or do they each have to come in and ask us to add it to the plan? And so that, that's the one question I would have for the state soil board is how would they make that determination? It appears to me that as long as we're listed as a region that is supportive of brush control, the State Soil Board doesn't know, doesn't care which county or area within Region G that we've got it, just that Region G is supportive of it, so brush control is consistent. And that's been my understanding. It was yeah. just going to be a simple wording solution, you know, to show our support for the strategy. That's kind of the way this started, yeah. however many months ago or a year ago when we, this problem was identified and what we needed to do to get it corrected was just put some language in there. It didn't require the specification from the state soil board, but the water development board sounds like still wants some specific information uh, to be included in the state water plan. So we've got to get, you know, everybody on the same page and resolve this exactly. issue because we're being excluded from the statewide competitive process and uh, we just need to continue to look for that solution. I guess there, there's two two motions, two well, actions. I think. I yeah, that's what I wanted to make sure that we're clear for everybody what we're what we're looking at. So, one is to ask the state to amend the plan because they overlooked what we had in our portion of the plan. That would take care of. That should take care of prior plan. If anybody comes in on the prior plan, correct? That's my understanding. Okay. Yes. And then for the new plan, we need somebody to come in with a specific project for us to put in the plan, and then that should take, hopefully, with the one in there, if we get the language right, would take care of, up for the new plan, for, those, for anybody else that comes in under the new plan. Yes. All right, now is there a cost associated with either one of those? <clears throat> uh, for, uh, for amending the state water plan, there's some coordination costs that I would have with with land and others of the Water Development Board. Okay. It, it could be something that's done strictly by you and trade to BRA and leave HDR out of it. I mean, you can do that as well. It's not a it's not a huge time intensive effort. I don't think uh, there is, there would be a cost for looking forward to the 2016 plan and 2017 state plan to have somebody come with that information to us we'd have to go through it and compile it and get it formatted and put into the right format for the regional plan 
uh, pull out the information that we need, craft the language such that we'd make certain with the state soil board it would be applicable to anybody who comes in now. And it's specific enough that we can put it in the database as a recommended strategy. So that's, you know, there's some work there. So they would probably have to come forward and pay for that because it's outside of our scope and budget at this point. Okay. That answered my question. Tommy O'Brien has yeah. a question. I, I think you said that one of the objections that the Water Development Board had was that we didn't have specific types of <coughs> brush removal. They wanted us to identify the for a strategy the type of brush removal was one of the items that they listed as what it was missing. But if I remember what you showed us in this four, five, six page document listed all these different types of brush control. It did. They wanted a more why specific is, project. Why is that different than these conservation plans that you've been Question. showing? Where it just says conservation two hundred thirty seven thousand dollars annual, but we don't have a specific conservation measure. It just comes from a, a list. How is that different than what we're trying to do with here's all the options that we have for brush control. Here's the areas they've been identified on you had a map. Mm -hmm. Why why is that not good enough? Or why is why is that not good enough if the conservation approach is good enough? I don't know. Good question, Tommy. It's a great question. Good question. Thank you. It just did, and you talked with who at the Water Development Board? Well, I discussed it with Lynn, and I've gotten the letter from the Water Development Board that they, what, that they what, looked at it. Well, with, was there a misunderstanding, maybe? I, I, I don't know if there's a misunderstanding, but I, I think that, that maybe water conservation strategies are thought of a little bit differently than other types of water management strategies. And so this brush control didn't fall into the conservation concept of water management strategy, but into that uh, into the requirements for any kind of water management strategy and we have specific requirements that under our rules that it has to be and that is that it needs to it couldn't be as generic as it was offered that needed to have some specific, a little bit of specific information in it, like where it is, as opposed to in the region. Uh, uh, but did we show a map that showed where it was? That colored map? We showed large areas that were areas where the State Soil Board had either done studies, were doing studies, or had planned studies, but they were big swaths, thousands of, or I'd I, I say hundreds of square miles. Any project would be a really, really discretized small subset of that. So basically said any project in those areas is what we're recommending, and that wasn't specific enough. And any of these methods of using using fire, using chemicals, using grubbing and clearing, um, <coughs> any of those are acceptable. And that they wanted a more specific, well, what method are you going to use? Where is it going to be? So, so, so basically, they're looking at it as uh, conservation is sort of this non-constructed water management strategy. They're looking at brush control, I guess, is more of, an, more of a constructed project. And when you're looking at a constructed project as a strategy, it needs to be more specific. That's that's my understanding. Of Some of your <coughs> conservation strategies are not constructive. Education, for instance. That's what I'm saying. They they treat conservation differently. Can I was hoping they treat brush control similar Can we to conservation. Brush control under conservation. Somehow? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the problem is then getting the soil board to see that in the state water plan, and that that may not happen well, either. It would be, It'd be in the same control is a way of conservation. Sounds like right. I don't know. I, I'm just what we're, what we're, what we're trying to do is to make certain that it gets rolled up into the state water plan correctly for 2017 so that there's no question. When the state soil board looks at the state water plan, there's no question that Region G has brush control as I understand. a recommendation. I'm just trying to see if there's any way to, to work around this. I'm, I've been trying to as well. Uh, <laughs> Dale, you had Dale Spurgeon. I would I would suggest that. Uh, well, what, let me ask this: What's our time frame? Because we're getting up, you know, 
to putting together a plan here pretty quick. So we need to know something about for the new plan within the next 60 days. We need to find out from the soil board what is going to need to be in there and to match up with what the water development board wants on the specifics of brush control. Yes. So that could probably be delayed. This action could probably be delayed, but we could go ahead and take action on asking that the existing state water plan be amended to include what we already have in our existing regional water plans as brush control as a, as a water management strategy, it appears to me. And we can confirm with the Soil and Water Conservation Board if, you know, that amendment works for the, you know, the existing plan for the next 18 months of potential funding, and then what details do we need to have for the new water plan to be taken up either in February or March for an action by this group. We can find, figure out what the cost might be for somebody that wants to sponsor that uh, uh, study or whatever to get it into the new water plan. Sure. If that's appropriate time timing, if that works. and That, and that time would work. As long as we have that strategy identified and we can present it to you in March as a recommended strategy, that would that would be preferable. Frankly, we could introduce a water management strategy after the IPP is even submitted. As part of that public comment period, we could add another strategy in and 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 have it come out in the final plan. That's not as preferable, but we could do that. But I, I would prefer to have this nailed down by by March so that we can get it into plan. Well, I would make a motion that we go ahead and ask for an amendment to the state water plan to the existing state water plan to include the language that's in our regional water plan uh, in the state water plan of support of uh, brush control as a water recommended water management strategy. Something along those lines. Okay. Okay, we have a motion by Dale Spurgeon. So I have several seconds. I saw Judy first. Judy Parker, some will use Judy as the second. Any other discussion? I think everybody's here. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, David. Okay. We'll move to agenda item 6.9, discussion and possible action on Brazos G committee reports and update. Uh, the Water Policy Committee does have, has met and has some recommendations, I think, for us. Mike McGuire is chairman of that committee and will be giving that report. <coughs> Okay, you have in front of you a copy of what we put together, what we've been working on for four months. Anyway, this is what we came together with this morning. Uh, take it home, look at it, pray over it, whatever. But I'm just saying that this is this is what we took the previous items that were in the previous two plans as a starting point and things that have changed in that period of time we've tried to encompass them, incorporate them in this document. These are a list of 17 issues. Some are old, some are new, some are real new. And if somebody has a burning issue that needs to be addressed that we haven't, uh, I would venture to say contact well, let's put everything through Trey because you may or may not get to me. So put it in through Trey and we will uh, we will take it up uh, if, if need be. Uh, I would say with the, the committee has agreed for this as a draft document. Uh, basically, look it over. Uh, I would probably consider it to be uh, to be acted on at the next meeting uh, if there is no need for the committee to revisit any of this then that gives 
the chair and the consultant flexibility relative to because we've been meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning prior to this group so uh, the February meeting that gives them flexibility as far as what we need to do uh, questions comments yes sir. Tim Brown We'll come in. I don't see anything in here on um, uh, conservation measures related to drought response. Uh, you know, we've talked about that from time to time. One of the frustrations that we have is inconsistent uh, efforts on the part of municipalities uh, to conserve water during times of extreme drought. Do you have a policy statement on that? Or well, talk about uh, that? Or probably issue that? 14, maybe. Tim? I glanced at that very briefly, but let me go back. Okay, it may not, it may not. The language didn't really strike me as being. It, it didn't, it may not. What I'm looking for, but. Okay. Well, I'm open to suggestions. If you have some language that you want to, want to see. Uh, can yeah, I just. Can you, you know, get this to us in word format? Yeah, we are. Yeah, that's not a problem. I mean, it's in it's in Word now. It, I mean, yeah, Jennifer's yeah. got it in Word now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Mike, it might be helpful that as the committee met, the entry section 8.3 is an overview of what the committee was recommending. So if there are some issues where we don't have something specific, it might be good to put it in that overarching section and then if there is something more specific that should be highlighted then it might get its own numerical uh -huh. paragraph I think, think that's the way it's yeah. organized the thing we worked on uh, the preamble if you will uh, on the first page and it goes on to the second page uh, and then the last page of the document are uh, last page and a half no, last page are overviews of things that have been discussed and uh, look at those if it's and if it's I'm sure that uh, if it's an Tim, as far as if it's just a, maybe a sentence or two in, in lieu of in some spot or whatever, you know, we could bring it, we could bring it to the group. You know, it, anything that's brought to the group. Say we brought this to the group, it's subject to the group's Understand. approval. Yeah. Understand. Anyway, I'll try to and, I'll try to put you know, in some thoughts between now and the next meeting. And <laughs> if, if that, I'm just you know if we need to discuss it as a, as a committee, yes. But if 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 it's something that you know. We we'll say we take we adopt this and amend it with one, two sentences or whatever. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. Sure, I appreciate that. <clears throat> but this is, you know, good this is point. this is a good, very good starting point. Yep. Uh, if it's if it's if it's a change that yeah. would not necessitate uh, a committee meeting that we could bring up as a nominal amendment, I don't see a problem with it. Good. Okay. Any other question? <clears throat> Excuse me for Mike. So, look over this between now. Probably ought to give us a week before the next meeting. And uh, if you have any suggestions or comments or anything you'd like to see added, uh, send them to Trey, please. Okay. All right. Agenda item 610, discussion and possible action on report by Brad's G administrator. Which includes 1 the identified dates for the sub regional meetings in March 2015. Chairman, thank you. Uh, what we're targeting, and it's reflected in David Dunn's schedule he gave uh, in the earlier presentation, is the uh, March 24th, 25th, and 26th. We're targeting those as uh, dates for the sub regional meetings, and we'll hold those meetings uh, in Abilene, Waco, and College Station. That's what we're anticipating. Um, just Pencils under your calendar. We'll uh, set the times and uh, 
specific locations, we'll get that out to you, but just be aware of that. Um, any questions on that? Did y'all get those dates? Y'all have any questions for him on those? Okay, you'll send out invitations to... Yes, we'll get that out. Yeah, everybody will. Okay. Right. I've got just one more item. Uh, we're at a point now where uh, I think uh, late this week, early next week, we'll be sending out solicitations for the four voting member vacancies that we have open. We have two municipalities, one steam electric and uh, one for an industrial position. So you all get notices. We'll send to county judges and others. I think Jennifer will send about, what, two or 300 letters out and we'll have it posted on our website. But anyway, uh, if you know folks in your community or your area that uh, would be qualified and interested in one of those positions, please let them know. And if they have any questions, they can certainly contact me. So anything else? Questions? Any other questions for Trey? Yes, sir. What's the last one? It's two municipal slots, one steam electric, and one in industry's position. Industry. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank All right, thanks, much. Trey. Appreciate that. Uh, agenda item seven, discussion of possible action on new business to be considered at the next meeting. Does anybody have anything they this time they would like for us to add an agenda? Okay. Agenda item eight, confirmation of the next meeting. We've already kind of looked at the schedule, so February 4th is when we're planning the next meeting. Uh, that that may be, we may start earlier in the day before lunch. We'll let you know hopefully in plenty of time so you can plan. Uh, scope of work committee will probably need to meet sometime also. Uh, <clears throat> Trey, did you want, uh, you're going to send out uh, for, didn't you say in two weeks for uh, uh, consultants? Oh, yeah, yes, yes, sir. Yes. Probably the next couple of weeks, two or three weeks, we're going to issue a request for proposals to solicit uh, consulting firms for the next uh, regional planning cycle. I suspect that'll take around two months to go through that process once we initiate it. I uh, think historically, and, and at least my impression at this point, is the scope of work committee would be the group that would review whatever proposal we receive uh, through that process and then make recommendations to the larger group at, at some time in the next two to three months. So, Okay, so probably in another meeting for them in two to three months. Yeah, I'd say okay. so. That's what I wanted we'll, to get. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll, we'll be in contact in that, too. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, they're, they're on their way. Any questions on any of the dates? All right. Y'all ready to go, aren't you? So Gen move. <laughs> that is a jerk. I was wondering if we could talk about brush control. How about GPCD? The time on the thing? clock on the wall is 456. <laughs> 356. 356. Yeah, 356. It's warm. Thank you all for your time and participation. Long day. It ain't over yet. Well, good luck. It's going to be dark for you. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you looked at us. Well, after you told me that, and I was looking down my list. I still got David Blackburn and Larry on here. If they resign, that means they're not.